All right, we're good. Yes, we are back. We should be. Uh, perfect, perfect. Okay, so um, we're just introduced who we are, who we're playing. Um, so I guess that's where we're all good to go. But we should probably do a recap of where we are in the story because it's been two sessions so far. We've actually got uh, covered a lot of ground actually for just uh, two episodes. So um, let us uh, let us go back and uh, figure out. We're about to well, we don't seem to have fixed the black bars, Askren. So what you might want to do is just move the, um, just widen the overlay to the right uh, to fill the whole screen. I guess maybe I'm not sure. It, yeah, it is. That's why it's why it's weird. Um, yeah. So just kind of pull and drag. Uh, hello, all. How does this giveaway work? What do we do for the giveaway? The player's handbook is somewhere around here, but I'm still moving in. Uh, it's exclamation point giveaway and join in, and we're in the next. So many days, like a week and a bit, maybe uh, we'll draw a winner, uh, and I'll get in touch with the winner and send it over. Of course, it's gonna be much easier to sending stuff to the Americas on that because I'm over here. So yay for cheap postage. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, we're looking forward to that. Uh, some of the ways you can interact with our show whilst we're uh, still figuring out some overlay stuffs uh, is uh, that you can uh, tweet here. Every 25 retweets, you guys get to decide what happens in our game with a, a viewer decision. Um, and when uh, we reach uh, nine more followers time, you guys get another viewer decision. So if you're in chat and you haven't followed yet, then do hit that follow button and join us. What's up, Big Fred Cheese? Um, I'm from Denmark, let's ask. Yeah, I think we ship to America, Canada, uh, and anywhere in Europe. So uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, so you need to keep dragging over. No, no, it's it's uh, uh, it's the actual like the thing is actually fit to the screen. Uh, I have no idea what's causing the black bars because the output resolution is the same as the video resolution. So um, I have no weird. idea. Weird. Um, is it the same resolution as at your monitor? Uh, shouldn't matter but uh it's 19 it's the the same resolution as the overlay that's the way i set it up uh so I've got the, the video resolution and the like the broadcast resolution and the output resolution to the same size so i have no idea why it's not doing that because if i if i stretch Wait. it what well, if like if i stretch it it's just gonna go uh below the black bar like the black uh, bar is gonna cut it off if you you can you stretch it any further across oh yeah no I see no no yeah yeah all right, well, no worries. We'll carry on. It doesn't matter too much, uh, but that's weird. Uh, we'll figure that out for next time. Don't worry, guys. So, um, other than that, though, uh, let's do that. Let's do the recap. Let's get into what we're actually doing today. So, Brian, as our DM, do yes. remind us. What All right. We're up. Uh, so, as as you guys, if you guys recall, um, the we began the last session with you guys having just discovered this. Uh, this lodge that was in the middle of um we got the... lawnmower of doom from train <laughs> 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 uh, oh my god all right so uh so as you guys uh we started last time you guys had just discovered this lodge uh, in the middle of this snow-covered forest, uh, this forest that you are investigating because it is the middle of summer and somehow this forest is covered in snow and ice. Uh, you decided to check out the lodge, and as you approached, you discovered some very bewildered um, people there who did not know what to make of you guys. Uh, you had kind of, you know, they they thought you might have been some sort of some sort of creatures working for whoever they were working for. Uh, there was some misunderstandings, there was some stuff going on, and you guys ended up getting into a pretty big fight. Uh, you beat up the uh, the bandits that were outside of the place, and you made a friend, or you didn't really make a friend, you uh, spared the life of one of the bandits. Uh, Are you named... muted again on OBS? Me? No. No. Not. No. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Apparently you have sound. No, I care. Apparently we're good. <laughs> Maybe just you, Emma. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Um, anyway, uh, you guys kind of spared with this uh, this female half-orc named Tenpenny. Then she told you that inside was the leader of the bandits named Rokar. Uh, and it was also, he was keeping the noblewoman who you had come to find. Uh, you kicked in the door in fantastic style. Uh, you barged yes, in. Yes, we breached and cleared. Yeah, you did. And you... Uh, beat up quite a lot of bandits before facing off against Rokar himself. Uh, it was a, a little bit of a tough fight, but you guys managed to come out on top with a clutch 
uh, assist by Tenpenny with her uh, her crossbow at the last minute. Uh, and as it was the, yeah, as that kind of uh, as that ended, you also saved the woman. She was in the basement, and you made plans both to have Tenpenny get her back safely back to town, while she told you that the uh, the forest was. Um, had been taken over by some sort of fey creatures, and they were the ones who the bandits were working for. And so you guys decided that you were going to uh, head deeper into the forest to find out exactly what's going on. Maybe stop this person named Teb, Teb Notton, who you had heard he seems to be the one in charge, as far as you can tell. And, uh, yeah, so you charged off into the woods. Tenpenny took the, uh, the noblewoman back to town. And as you trudged through these deeper and deeper snow-filled woods, you found uh, you found a hut that was on top of some trees, and it was kind of in the middle of a clearing with boulders of ice. Uh, and as uh, as Douglas ran in to chase what he he saw a young girl in the boulder field. So as he ran in to chase her and yes. she ran away from him, you guys were all magically transformed into different creatures. So, uh, <laughs> just just to recap for chat, right now, uh, Kira is a, a large, burly lizard man. Um, Daylon is a, uh, he is a fantastic and glamorous winged pegasus. Um, and Douglas is uh, a bronze dragon wormling. Not a, not yeah. a full-grown bronze dragon, but a, 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 like a baby bronze dragon. Yeah, it's still pretty badass. It's still pretty badass. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, <laughs> and uh, also, uh, this happened whilst we're on a countdown, but I played a game for you. Welcome the rainfall to Adventure You Sir, are a gentle rain. And the scholar, thanks for following, my friend. So, um, yeah, I guess we should uh, get into today's session. So, we've got a Pegasus, a lizard, and a dragon. I feel like we're doing pretty well. Uh, we've gone from human form to kobold form to awesome form. So maybe this isn't even our final form. We don't know. Um, <laughs> it'll be pretty cool either way. So um, I guess we should uh, figure out what we're uh, doing today. And thank you so much to Spabs49 for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. He's uh, our gentleman and a scholar. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. So um, that puts us just like seven followers away from a viewer decision where you guys in chat get to decide what happens. So if you are new and you haven't followed us, then hit that button and join us to uh, to make the show even more fun for you guys. So um, we're here in a boulder field, hanging out. What do we do? <laughs> so um, should we pick up uh, from there? I guess that's good. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to just drop you guys onto the map over here, and uh, sure. we'll we'll go over to our combat overlay. Um, so sure, sure. This is Good this luck. is basically what you guys see. Before I do that, I'm actually gonna grab your uh, your monster tokens because we need those. Cause <laughs> yes, we do. That is who you are now. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is your life now. This is this is what, <laughs> this is what we've become. <laughs> All right. So uh, so Douglas, you are. We'll take you out of the way, and we will put Dragon in its place. Uh, Daylon, of course, gets of course. to be a Pegasus. I'm pretty jealous of that, actually, Daylon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dragons are cool and all, but I feel like a. Uh, a Pegasus is quite majestic creature. <laughs> <laughs> so I can persuade people more. Yeah. Like, exactly. well, why, why should I be? Because Pegasus. Because I'm a fucking <laughs> Buy my beer. <laughs> Buy all my beer. Oh my gosh. Well, I found a true steed to carry my cart, so. Nice. nice. Have to upgrade into a larger cart. Yeah. Pegasus yep. around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's good. So, um, oh, we're getting faces in the right places, it looks like. So, uh, this is what we see. Let me have a look around this map here whilst I'm in dragon form. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I see this boulder field around here and what seems to be some kind of lodge off to our west. Um, oh, my God. Well, Pegasus Daylon, Lizard Folk Catherine, and Douglas Templeton. <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you not fit badass bronze dragon on the map okay fair, fair enough. oh did i uh, did i not put a uh, dragon okay i'll, I'll change okay, I'll ch no i'll change it in a second give me a second worry about, worry about the overlay first that's more important <laughs> so um <laughs> i'm gonna uh so what do i see in this lo in this lodge what exactly are we uh, looking at here okay so um I'll, i will get back to that it uh get, yeah. we'll get to the the lodge in just one second because right now uh you're 
if you recall, um, yeah. the more pressing concern for you was the fact that you were chasing this, uh, this young girl through the boulder field. That's right. Do I still see her? Second. Um, okay, yeah, you do. Uh, so you saw her. Um, let me just add my camera. You saw her uh, basically dart deeper into the boulder field. Do you remember what she was doing while she was darting into the, uh, the field of boulders? No, I don't. Okay, well, what she was doing was she was apparent. She was you had you were asking things of her, and yeah. you were shouting to her, and she was uh, apparently terrified. Uh, she had yelled some things, uh, you know, it, back at you, and you guys. Had, let me just uh, let me get my notes here. So she looked scared, so I ran after her, and then you yeah, guys yeah, kind yeah. Of just followed along. I was like, "Quick, I gotta get her." Yeah, well, so so you had so what had happened was you had originally spotted her as, almost as soon as you uh, you made the uh, the clearing, and you rushed in after her, and the rest of the guys uh, just kind of uh, followed. You know, they followed you in. Um, so as you as you chased her, um, she was like uh, the first thing she said was uh, she said, uh, "I'm sorry, don't hurt me. Uh, I never meant to call you names." And then she rushed off. Uh, and then the second thing you heard from her was, uh, please don't keep me here. It's so cold and I miss my mother. And then we turned into... That was when you turned into... Well, into, okay. Yes. So I, I I guess we need to react to the fact that we've turned into a dragon, a pegasus, and a lizard folk. So um, I think the shot was like, I've been like, we're all dragons. And I turn around and <laughs> you're a pegasus and a lizard. So I, uh, I look for a group of you two. I'm like, what the hell has just happened? I like breathe out some flames. <laughs> kind of I don't like... rightly. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm just kind of like looking at my burliness, like lovely. <laughs> looking at my burliness. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, uh, bronze dragons don't breathe flames; they breathe lightning. Oh fuck. <laughs> and I will brave some lightning. <laughs> I crackle. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so the the girl that the girl you saw her kind of run like right over here and behind one of the boulders. That it that looks like a boy, but pretend it's a girl for now. I will. Okay. So I um yeah I, I stop breathing this line. I don't really pay the slightest bit of attention to this kid because I'm like I'm a fucking yeah, yeah, dragon. Yeah. Uh, yeah we're all kind of like. Uh, yeah, so I turned to you and like, what the hell happened to us? Uh, Daylon, are, are you still in there? Do I have hey. a beard? Do I have a beard as a Pegasus? <laughs> you must do. <laughs> I don't know. Must have a beard. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of flap my wings kind of in towards my chest. Then I, then I put them in a, like in a folded <laughs> shrug. <laughs> <laughs> I like flap my wings out and get a bunch of like snow like shuffling off the trees and stuff like that. And I say, Catherine, are you in there somewhere? Unfortunately. <laughs> uh yeah. Um well it looks like I've become the awesome one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That day on is this to do with the cobalt thing? Is this your fault again? Uh, what no. Did you, touch? Mean, did you touch a statue? I, 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 I'd like to take credit for this one because I kind of lift my hoof up. I look pretty darn fancy, don't you think? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you look great, actually. You look, I uh, look fairly even a while, but um, I mean, the still of fact that you're some kind of Pegasus creature. Uh, hey, little girl. I say with my like, big rumbling dragon voice. <laughs> hey, little girl. Uh, <laughs> uh, but thank you to Doc King Kaiser for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You, sir, are a gentle Kaiser and a scholar. Thank you for following. That puts us just a few followers away from a viewer decision where you guys get to decide what happens in our game next and thanks so much Le Hitch for following shout out to my boy Hitch good guy he streams some good D&D &D. good to see you here today my friend so um 
Uh, oh, also, Askren, you might want to put the uh, the follow account on the screen so we can see how close we are to I, uh, our would, goal. If I uh, if Twitch alerts was working, I will put one text in text though. Uh, yeah, put one in text. That's why. Uh, so um, let's do that. So um, all right, and so I uh, I turned to a little girl, and I'm like, what? What? Who are you, little girl? Well, Catherine, I think you know you were a woman, right? Now you're a lizard, but I I guess the same principle still applies. Do you want to talk to this girl? I'm, you know, I'm a fucking dragon right now. I mean, I'm kind of scary looking. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm a fucking dragon. I mean, okay, but as a little girl, like I idolize Pegasus. So that's like... true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, little girls do that, I hear. So I feel... <laughs> I feel maybe uh, Daylon should be the one to try and talk. As much as it's a bad idea, she'd be more willing to talk to a Pegasus and probably sell for you. Go and talk to her, Daylon. This is your... This is your you got us into this. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Brandy, uh, cameras are broken. <laughs> oh no! What? Oh, oh, that's fuck. All right, yeah, that's just that. <laughs> it's because of the chat thing. It it's the way the window works. Yeah, yeah. So I I like push you towards her with my big old dragon claw. <laughs> <laughs> um, I move gradually forward. I'm like, just walk in the park, hey? <laughs> clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop to the girl. I'm like. Hello, and I, I I lay my head like close to the ground, my neck almost touching the surface of the snow. Uh, <laughs> I have come to save you. To the little girl. All right, uh, roll me a diplomacy check, please. I fuck. <laughs> In before is not one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so it's a persuasion check. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I got snow off behind me. Yes. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so I get. Uh, so you just kind of uh, come it. tromping through the snow, and uh, as you you know, as you try and you you try and sound cordial and nice, but you end up kind of bashing into the rocks. You're not used to your wings and stuff, and you're basically this just large horse head peeks around, uh, and you know shouts. Uh, she just kind of like reels back in terror, and she says, uh, sh "She says, I don't want to be a stupid doll. I want to go home. Take me back." And she's kind of looking around, and Take she me back. <laughs> she rushes off once more deeper into the ice field. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gallop after her. Okay. Shouting. But 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 I'm a horse. I'll save you. I'm like the steed that carries you away from the enemy. I will not turn you into a doll. Just come ride the Pegasus into the sunlight into the day of dawn and have we'll, we'll, we'll get tea and crumpets. I just keep shouting as I gallop after. <laughs> I fly above. <laughs> All right, so you uh, you rush after her um, as she. Uh, can you roll me a perception check, please? <laughs> I don't have negative one to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so you as you kind of um, uh, as you're rushing towards her, she holds up her hand and she says. Uh, you, you, her her face, like the expression on her face, changes, uh, not really to one of terror, but almost to one like, almost as if she's realized something. And she looks directly at you. She says, "I, I have to get away, and you should too before they see you. Run!" Uh, but just as she's saying this, and you are tromping past, um, you kind of all of a sudden around you the you kind of, there's just a whip of wind, and in the wind, you almost, you see sort of images, uh, like, just images of young, chil of, of young children, possibly this child, 
uh, being being abused, being uh, like having things experiments done to her, uh, like in the center of a, some sort of magical ritual, and also ar- you catch a glimpse like around you as you slow down in the snow, the ice boulders around you almost like you see these ghostly forms of. Tor- what look like tormented souls that are sort of reaching through the ice and, you know, coming up, and you can kind of see them, like, pressed up against the ice of these boulders around you. Uh, I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Quick. Alright, let's see if we can find this. I'm, are we doing this in, I'm doing this as Bronze Dragon Douglas, my character sheet, right? Uh, not you, it's just the Pegasus. Oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna fly above. Yeah, you you're hovering above, so you can see all this happening. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, seventeen. Seventeen. Um, you like perfect number. Yeah, it is because as you uh, uh, as you kind of see all these images and these things happening to you, um, like for a second there, you're just you're almost shut down, like you're almost frozen in fear, but you manage to sort of um. You manage to steal your resolve and kind of shake the images out of your head. And when you are, uh, when you look back, you realize that the little girl is no longer there. Like she was an illusion, or she just dipped. You don't know. Do I see her? You were. Uh, roll me a perception check, please, because sure. you were watching the whole time. All right. So yeah. my perception as a dragon is better than my normal one. Oh, I've also got. <laughs> Wait, am I still wearing my cloak? It's it's with you, yeah. All right, so not on that one. Fifteen. <laughs> uh, you were kind of, you were kind of watching the whole scene. The the girl just sort of vanished. Hmm. I land. Where did she go? Uh, I saw some scary stuff. I don't even know if she was real. I think uh, there are tormented things that happen in this land and. That she was a... a, a Some kind of who beard? Welcome, Hugh Beard, to the adventure. You, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you for following. I mean, I'm guessing. Illusion that was trying to tell us more about what's actually going on here. Well, why is she taking us here? I mean, we're... Do I see this lodge at this point, Astrid? Oh, the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not really a lodge per se. You you kind of landed over here. It's not really a lodge per se. It um, uh, let me get the the exact description. It appears to be a, a like a small hut, a wooden hut that is standing on four legs. Each of them is one single tree trunk whose gnarled roots kind of resemble the toes of a giant chicken. Uh, the hut is constructed of heavy logs with kind of a some patch- kind of giant conk. <laughs> <laughs> the hut is is constructed of heavy logs with a sort of a patchwork roof uh, and shaved bark shingles. Uh, the hut has a simple open doorway, no actual door in it, and inside you can just see a uh, a, a wooden chair that's set, you know, just right in the center. I say, uh, why do you think she's led us here, then? If she's trying to tell us something about the. Uh the whole shit going on here. Maybe we should go inside the hut and see what's in there. Looks like some kind of the foot of some kind of giant chicken. I'm gonna kind of approach them now. <laughs> I I I go towards it, but I nearly like take the thing down with my like claw and like put a claw <laughs> for the hut. I can't really get inside without taking the roof off. So you're you're not that big. You're, okay. <laughs> you're medium sized. <laughs> Damn it! I uh, I crashed for a window then. <laughs> okay. Um. The the hut is sort of up a snow hill. Uh, I've got and, this. <laughs> and you can you can kind of walk up the hill towards it. Uh, like I said, because it's on uh, because it's on. I this... don't walk, Brian. I fly. Okay, you can flap up the hill. It's not a big deal. Um. The hut is is sort of up on these like uh eight foot legs, so it's it's off the ground. All right, I fly. I fly up to it. I'm gonna crash through a window, but trying to be majestic about it and trying to be like, <laughs> Yo, wanna, you're not gonna go through the the open doorway. No, you can circle around and go. Through this the is window. what dragons do, and also Douglas likes to break things. All right, <laughs> you uh, you circle around. You just whoosh, 
and smash in through one of the windows. It's a tight, it's a tight fit, but there are windows. Uh, there are three windows in this place as you kind of crash in. Your wings get stuck for a second, and then you have to like, no, wait, no, I got this. As you, I got this. Don't worry. Don't help me. <laughs> don't help me. No, I don't need your help. All right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you have wedged yourself inside, uh, inside this little hut. What do I see? Uh, wow. No, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Um, you, uh, you see exactly what you see before you, which is a pretty much an empty hut, save for this wooden chair that's right in the center. Ah, uh, okay. Um, not much in here, guys. Just a chair. I sit on the chair. Right. Uh, I like <laughs> flip flop in to follow. Okay, you can walk up the hill. Daylon, do you remember what you spotted last week? No. It, Did I spot well, something specific last week? Yeah, it was right before the magic took hold of you. Oh, no, I don't remember. Okay. No, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, as as, as uh, Douglas had gone charging into the ice field, you kind of caught a glimpse of this hut, and you actually saw in through the front door, there was this w single wooden chair, and there was a, uh, a blonde-haired doll that was sitting on the chair. Okay, and there's no doll this time? Will has not found a doll. There's nothing in here at all. I'm going to try and sit on the seat. Okay. You are a horse. You are a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. You're, you're a horse. You are a horse. <laughs> I walk forward and then gradually like circle around as if I'm learning how to reverse a car for the first time ever. And then like a like a garbage truck. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, you uh you spend a good five minutes trying to get yourself situated in this chair. Like it's not really made for a horse to sit in, but uh, it's not a horse chair. No, it really it really is not. Oh, Hurry then, let's get man. Uh, I say, what did try, Doug, uh, Daylon, the, please, just to try and focus here. Uh, there's nothing in here. I just got so tired of standing, you know. And before I saw that this, uh, on this chair, there was a, a doll. And I just, we just followed somebody that. A doll look? Dollish person. So there's a doll, and I, I figured, I don't know. Maybe the chair is magical. Well, what, what what kind of doll was it? Was it like the girl, or different, or would I have made the difference? You, it was it was far away. Uh, you you could see that it kind of had blonde hair. Hmm. Uh, could have been. I'm not not exactly sure. That's weird. Like, okay. Well, if she's not real, and maybe she's to do with this doll, but uh... Fuck. <laughs> I, um, is it like the doll here? Yeah. Da, da, da. Oh, that, is that, that's not supposed to be there. That's... <laughs> Ignore that. No, uh, so as you guys are, uh, as... I saw it, it was right here. <laughs> no, as you guys are, um, as you guys are kind of mulling this over, you hear sort of, uh, the wind whips up around you, and all of a sudden, like, these uh, these sort of shimmering lights start whipping past the windows, and like s almost circling the building. Uh, how many of them are there? Is, they're going pretty fast. It's hard to tell. Okay. Uh, Four of these. Well, you're the magic one. I don't know. I guess I've got some magic now that I'm a dragon, though. I'm gonna start like clopping in place. Like a scared horse, not like bewildered by the the wind. <laughs> okay, yeah, you guys, you you're just sort of um, you're you're sitting here like you kind of think you hear in echoing sort through the hut, like little little vague whispers that just um, you know things like. 
You shouldn't be here. Whoa, 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 why, why can't we be here? <laughs> Excuse me, anyone there? I kind of shout out to the people. If anyone's, if anyone's there. <laughs> uh, there's no answer. There's just more, like, every so often there's more just whispering and kind of coming from very, like, all, just no, no one direction. Sometimes they're coming from the corners of the, you know, up in the ceiling. Sometimes they sound like they're kind of rapping on the Are windows. Are they getting closer? No, it seems like they're just sort of circling around. Like, you hear, sometimes you hear, like, a... On the windows. Hello? Oh. <laughs> on the window, I haven't broken in. Yeah. I, uh, I head outside, I guess, to, like, see if I can see anything more from out here, or... Uh, roll me a perception check, please. Sure, sure. All right, let me roll this uh, perception check again. So not a twenty-three. Okay, twenty-three. Yeah, uh, as you, uh, the, it looks like the wind has whipped up, you know, even more snow and stuff um, around you. you. The the weather has picked up. It's you don't you you, you don't really see anything at first, but you kind of you think you see a you might have seen a dark shape just kind of hover like past you just obscured by the uh by the oncoming blizzard hmm i um fuck okay well i i, I look for the kind of i kind of fly above i guess i start flying upwards because i can fly now so i kind of fly trying to get above like this kind of storm mm -hmm. kind of area i guess yeah you can you can you can kind of lift yourself up to get a better view okay so yeah i want to kind of look down from here and see if i can see any of these, this dark figure anywhere uh as you as you soar upwards it's you kind of you you just look around and you catch a glimpse of it and it looks like um it looks like sort of circling around the hut is this very very tiny shape it's hard to make out any details of it but it's just this tiny little uh tiny shape that is just kind of flying in a circle uh you can see every so often you can see th like it it kind of move a little bit um, maybe, maybe doing something magical as it kind of sends lights out from it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna fly towards this thing. I, I see someone! Guys, I'm gonna shout to the guys through the storm. I'm just, like, trying to look up, like, uh... <laughs> Alright, you, you fly straight towards it. Do you wanna... Are you, are you attempting to do anything, or are you just gonna... Just kind of get a bit of view, get right up close. I want to get close to it, and I'm gonna kind of kill it if I get my hands on this thing as well, while I'm flying in here. All right. Um, yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna attack it, 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 you're not sure. I'm gonna grab it. Can I go grab it in my big claws? What's that okay. XP? Uh, I'm gonna yeah. grab it and kind of like try and like tackle it down to the ground, I guess, into the hut, like uh, through the roof. All right. Uh, I'm gonna roll a perception check to see if it spots you first. I'm coming in. <laughs> uh, let me check something. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so as you uh, go ahead and roll me an attack. Sure. What's going on, Poppy Love? Uh, okay, attack. So I've got these dragon stats now. Let me see. So my claw, my bite is a plus five. Okay. So I'm gonna roll. Oops. What's that roll? It's twenty plus five is an eleven. Uh, unfortunately, an 11 is not enough because it has seen you, like, it spots you yeah. diving through the blizzard, and it just sort of moves out of the way quickly. You, uh, you streak past it, and there's not enough time to sort of slow yourself down before you crash into the snow, and, like, not hard or anything, it's just the ground came up faster than you expected. You're still getting used to this flying thing, um, and you sort of step up and right yourself, and you just see the, the, the tiny figure slinking off into the storm. Uh, I uh, I try and follow after. I guess like guys, follow me. Uh. <laughs> I, I go uh, next to Catherine, and I kind of rest my my feet down, and I twist my horse neck, and I keep making like a really awkward head nodding portion, like to her. <laughs> My back and then to her. And then okay. my back. I'm, I'll uh, attempt to try to climb onto his back with my big bird. <laughs> yeah, <Yes. lizard> body. <laughs> yeah, you you oh, can you can you can climb up on top of him. He you're you're kind of heavy. Uh, so 
<laughs> it's a little bit weird because he's not a full size horse, uh, but you can definitely get on top of him if you'd like. <laughs> Sorry about the weight. <laughs> Uh, let's go. <laughs> uh, Follow me, and I like I like push on my claw to like hold the lizard folk's hand, so we've formed like the ultimate Triforce Voltron as we're flying. <laughs> yeah, the claws on, on the yeah. shoulders of the lizard. And I'm you like, lift, you lift us all. I'm, I'm helping you with lift as I'm like flapping my wings because you are like going down because you're too heavy. So I'm kind of like bringing you up. Just draw me to kick things and then you could shoot lightning. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, Psychedelic is asking quick synopsis of Rain and Winter. So, we're, it's only, uh, we're only two episodes in, uh, but um, we are currently trying to figure out why there's this uh, huge winter going on in this forest, despite the fact that it's the middle of summer. So, we've investigated the fact that there are a bunch of mercenaries murdered. We found that they're murdered by some like pixie creatures uh, and that there were some bandits working with these pixie creatures. And we know. Now there is a guy who's apparently in charge, let me find my notes for him. Uh, a guy apparently is in charge called Teb, uh, and that there is a portal in the center of the forest, uh, which made everything turn to ice and brought through these ice beings. So we're trying to figure out how to stop the ice stuff from happening, basically. So, uh, so Will, as you are, you wanted to follow this thing, there, technically, you could go into the forest, but you only see, like, there's one, um, there is a, a pathway that seems to lead out of this clearing. It's not the way you came from, because if you remember, wow. you came from the woods over here. Um, yes. But there is a there's a pathway leading out this way. Okay. Well, I shall start flying off this way with the Voltron. All right. Are you guys gonna follow after him? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we are. As you uh, as you make your way down the the this kind of cleared trail among the trees, uh, it it continues through a very narrow pass, sort of descending in a southern direction through a, a very icy valley. Uh, however, you guys notice, um, especially Douglas, because you're kind of getting a view from above, you notice that there seems to be an unusual pattern of lines that's scratched into the fresh snow covering the trail. Uh, at, you know the edge of this trail unusual pattern of lines you say yeah it doesn't look like they were made by wind or anything like that so they look like they've been like clawed in by something yeah it looks like something may have clawed or used some sort of a stick or something to actually make these lines okay uh, they, I kind of stopped the group wait, wait hang on we're, we're, let's look at this uh, they look like they're some kind of like uh uh, what I'm trying to say, like marking like some kind of symbol or anything like religious or they're definitely some kind of they're definitely some kind of symbol like they're not random they're definitely intentional however you are you have no familiarity with these things okay I tend to agree you guys know anything about this wizard girl <laughs> <laughs> does uh, me does she know anything about it, Brian? I don't have no idea. Uh, yeah, she, she's well, welcome to roll me an Arcana check if she wants to try and investigate it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know I know something <laughs> you guys might want to turn into kobolds again. Now to minus one. <laughs> Uh, no, you have no idea what these are. Uh, however, um, as you're kind of... Uh, as you're walking, it you can you all of a sudden you you sort of you're reaching out to to inv you know to get a better view, and there's just sort of a a blast of freezing wind that kind of shoves you back and sort of freezes like uh almost like a like a, a it's almost as if there were a glass dome around this pathway and you just see these ice crystals kind of creep up around you know to cover it but there's no actual dome it's invisible so you you kind of is you're blown back by this freezing wind uh so we will get blown back whoa whoa okay this thing is some kind of like magic-y thing clearly uh wait i'm a dragon do you think dragons know anything about like magic maybe i perhaps uh, like do you have arcana try, try and get in tune with my uh <laughs> Dragon itself. Uh, I do not have any training in uh, Arcana, but I do have plus one to int, so. <laughs> Try, why well, not? We'll see if you can figure some, something Try. out. <laughs> it, the only thing you can tell is uh, if you. 
you probably don't want to get near these things because you might get frozen again. Um, yeah, I say that. I can't really tell what this thing is. Do you think we could, like, blow it up or something? They seem to be, they, like I said, they seem to be lining the whole, like, they continue down the trail on both sides. Just gonna uh, go down the trail. Am yeah, I still can... on you? Sorry. <laughs> it's still right. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got a... Go yeah, I, you can get back on, uh, you can get back on Daylon if you want. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. What if we, like, fly over it? Yeah, That's can... probably a smarter idea. Well, like I, said, like I said, they're not they're not blocking your way. There is the trail, and these, yeah. these are yeah. carved into either side of the trail. And then on either side of those is, like, ice, val like, rock wall. So that kind of... You're, you're like, at the bottom of a valley here. Yeah, I, I guess, guess they're just a feature and just walk down the trail. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess we're thinking, like, if we fly above them, we definitely can't accidentally step on one or go anywhere near one. So I guess we can, like, try and fly above them to avoid any kind of accidentally stepping on one. So okay. My, uh... take Tilly out and uh, start flying, like, uh, following the trail still, but just, like, above it, I guess. So we're not accidentally running into anything we shouldn't. All right, give me a second. I gotta restart my Firefox because it crashed on me <laughs> no worries um yeah you can roll even lower than the zero psychedelic so if you roll a one you have like a minus two minus three or something in the skill uh because i i guess it's because you're a lizard folk because normally you're good at arcana but a lizard folk stats are not, not as good so yeah um <laughs> you, you got yeah. Right. um i somehow forgot everything <laughs> i don't think i've seen i don't think i've seen anything lower than a minus two i don't think i've seen a minus three been rolled but um <laughs> Yeah, it's just, uh, it happens from time to time. <laughs> Bad times. <laughs> All right. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to uh, tonight's campaign. So, if you guys don't know, every Thursday uh, after this game, we run a uh, we run a game where you guys can join in and play every single Thursday. So uh, you can join in and play with us uh, tonight. And in fact, chat will be playing alongside us tonight as usual. So that's a good time. All right. So as you guys are you guys are carrying along on this trail um, for. He's easily like maybe about maybe about an hour. Um, you know, you're you're going deep deep into the heart of the woods here, um, and so the you know the wind is picking up heavily around you. It is at every time you know every step you take, you it almost feels like you're getting closer and closer to the center of whatever is creating this wind this winter as the snow gets slightly deeper, slightly you know more treacherous and the uh, air around you gets colder. Um, however, uh, you know, you're, th those of you who are flying, your movement is not terribly reduced. Uh, those of you who are walking are, you know, you guys are moving pretty, pretty slow. Um, however, I'm up definitely on day long specs. <laughs> yeah, but he, he's, still, he's still pretty encumbered, pretty, you know, pretty slowed down by this. Uh, horses don't do great in the snow. Um, so, at, but as you, as you guys are walking, you can all just barely make out that the tree line breaks and there is another kind of small clearing up ahead with a, a, a rising rock wall of, you know, rising cliff, uh, off on one side. Okay, so, um, see the, the how far away we, are we from this cliff, would you say? Uh, you, well, you, you can see it a pretty decent distance in advance, so you can, Whatever you want to do, you can do like as far in advance as you feel you need to. Okay, so I, uh, as I'm looking like, over the forest, does it look like we're? Do I just see forest all around me at this point, or can I see one edge of the forest, or we just like? Really... No, you're you're deep in this in the heart of the forest. Cool, cool. So I, I say uh, as we're like flying along, you know, we we could be coming towards the center of this place, in which case, you know, we gotta watch out for that pixie thing. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I wrote it down. Its name is <laughs> something weird. Uh, Izoze, Izoze, the blue flying pixie thing, uh, as well as Teb. So, you know, stick close up here because we might be in a bit of trouble. Um, I still co -words. What's up the audio today? Apparently, there's like audios in the. It's actually in the left ear, apparently. So I don't know. Apparently, Askren's only coming through in the left. I have no idea. It may be uh, the way voice meter prioritizes. I have no idea. <laughs> no, we're not kobolds anymore, man. Uh, we were kobolds now. I am a bronze dragon. 
Uh, Kira is a lizard folk, and Trainzy <laughs> is a Pegasus. So we're doing well. We're going up in the world, I think. Tell me if I'm doing any better on the audio. I said it's a mono channel. I don't know if that changes anything. Well, probably. We'll see. Um, see, so yeah, I say uh, apparently that's the right channel. So it was in the left, now it's in the right. Interesting. Well, um, it's, it's going to be 30 seconds before they hear it. The true, yeah. So yeah, I, I start flying towards uh, the, the cliff face that we see. Okay, uh, so as you kind of soar up above a little bit, you get a glimpse of what is coming up ahead. You can see that the um, there appears to be some sort of campsite uh, right up next to this cliff. There, You can make out four sort of low, icy igloos that stand here in the snow uh, amidst a well-packed trail of footprints uh, that's passing between them. Uh, the cliff you can't really see much of, however, what catches your eye is what ex what is right just beyond those igloos. Um, there is, let me, let me actually describe it, uh, there appears to be sort of a bank of these large icy shot, like spears or I like icicles sticking outwards in a circle, um, seemingly kind of growing from the heavy sheet of ice that is covering the ground. Uh, a second ring of giant sort of icicle-shaped monoliths stand uh, inside this outer ring. And they seem to be surrounding a swirling cylindrical vortex that is easily ten feet in diameter. Uh, and from this vortex you can even make out the sort of icy winds and driving snow that is blasting outwards in all directions. Okay. Uh... I'm just gonna I'm gonna switch you over, Will, so you can you guys can see what what you're seeing. Sure, yeah, good idea. Let's have a look. Yeah. So, um, oh sweet, okay. So yeah, uh, all right. I'm gonna I see something here, uh, like some barrels or something. So I'm gonna start going towards that. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the uh, the igloos you can sort igloos, of yeah. you can sort of see into it. All right. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna check the first igloo here. Okay. I'm gonna just cautiously have a check inside. Sure. Um, go ahead. And, did you you want to just look inside? Or you want to actually go uh, go in? Yeah, just just look inside. I think. Okay. Uh, the interior of this igloo seems to be bare. Uh, what you can sort of make out um, in the the light that's filtering in, uh, it seems that some of the blocks have either been extended inwards or pushed outwards, sort of forming small shelves and recesses. Nothing in this one. Uh, guys, go check the ops for me. Okay. Kind of lay down to allow Catherine to get off. <laughs> <laughs> so, was everything a smooth ride? As smooth as it could get. Guess. You should probably work on that a little bit, you know. <laughs> I did my best. You know, just kind of <laughs> hobble over and covering after all of the weight and burden and check. <laughs> Alright, so uh, what are you guys, where are you guys moving to? Uh, I'll oh. check out this one here. Okay. Uh, as you peer into it, um, the uh, you can see sort of a winter blanket, a pile of furs, and a small chest that sort of take up most of the floor space in this cramped igloo. Uh, it looks like a small hole has been cut uh, into the low ceiling to allow smoke to escape, but you don't see a fire inside. Daylon, you're pretty much seeing the same, a, a similar thing in, uh, you know, a, a similar setup in the igloo that you're looking into. Um, however. Uh, as you guys are uh, as you guys are kind of doing this, all of a sudden there is a a whip of wind, and uh, I need everyone to roll me a perception check, please. Perception check. I'll get a list. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, Thirteen. <laughs> Not so great. Okay, thirteen. 
Yeah. Oh, in fact, whilst we're doing this role, as a reminder, guys, if you're new to the stream, uh, then we'll figure out these audio issues. We don't really know what's going on today. We've got some, some weird stuff going on, but we'll figure it out at some point around. Um, of course, if you're new, then do hit that follow button and join us. We are just about five followers away from a viewer decision where you guys get to decide anything which happens in our game. So if you are new, do join us uh, and uh, you get to uh, throw together a straw poll. The most popular one actually happens in our game. Previously, we were turned into kobolds, into dragons, pegasus, uh, and a lizard folk. So you guys can make some oh. crazy stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're right there. No? Yeah, I just didn't realize you could click it on the other sheet. <laughs> oh, it sounded like you're in pain. No! Oh! oh. Uh, Alright, um, Catherine, you are, uh, you kind of catch a glimpse of this before, like, almost as it's happening. You kind of, uh, you see these shapes darting at you, you know, out of the, uh, the wind. The other two of you are going to be taken by surprise as these things are going to uh, just sort of dive out either from the uh, from the igloo or from the air, the snow-filled air around you, and all make attacks against you. So, Douglas, you and Good. you and Daylon are going to be taken, uh, be going to be caught uh, by surprise. However, Catherine, you are not. So okay. great. <laughs> They've been screwed. Uh, oh, no. All right, uh, Daylon, you. Need to make me a dexterity saving throw. And... Uh, Douglas, that is a five to hit you. That is a miss. Yeah. Alright. That's not it. So, uh, so, Douglas, you kind of feel this this tiny thing just sort of dive bomb out of the snow at you. And uh, it's small little sh ice shard longsword. Uh, longsword for, for this tiny thing. Slashes against you, but it's it does not pierce your tiny hide. Uh, however, Daylon, you <laughs> there's all of a sudden this whip of ice energy and, that blasts outward uh, in a cone of cold that is going to wash over you, and you are going to take five ice damage. Okay. And with that, we are going to roll some initiative. Let's do it. Uh, initiative. Let's roll dex. Uh, yeah, one d twenty plus dex. So. Oh, sweet. <laughs> we know this. Oh, nat 20. Oh, oh no. <laughs> hey. I'll do the second roll. The first one was for the saving throw. Nice. Sweet. Just like, how many of them do we see? Just like three of them at this point? Uh, yeah, just three. Um, okay. So hold cool. on. I gotta add everyone. Come more ice damage from the ice and like coke. <laughs> Some crazy shit talk like that. <laughs> get him. All right, Last so, time we were in a fight, we actually wrecked these guys. So, uh, so Will, you got an eight. Yep. All right, eight. Uh, Catherine, you got a twenty. Mm -hmm. Douglas, you got a uh, thirteen. Yeah. And then, oh, I got a, a fifteen there, and then I gotta check these guys too. Um. Yeah. So, last time, good plan was I go tank the damage, Catherine kills them from afar, and Daylon throws a spear. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Clap. That's like a. That's like a... <laughs> oh, yeah. How oh, through a spear? <laughs> I'll just. Uh, Alright, so uh, we are going to. Wow, that's really loud in my ear. Give me a second to fix. That. So yeah, I don't know what's, what your like audio balance stuff is on. So changing to mono should usually work. Maybe it's just an OBS. You got your settings on weird. I have no idea. Uh, it should be on mono now, but who the fuck knows? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got combat music going. Cool. Um, so you have uh, it, Catherine. You are up first. What would you like okay. to do? As you see, there's one sprite that is kind of near you. Uh, there's also so you know some things going on around you. Yeah. Um. Quick question. So, if I was to say cast a spell, that would be using the stats, right? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I swapped them out already. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's do. I guess so we can do a do the killy thingies. This. <laughs> what do you want to do to it? I'm gonna cast burning hands on it. 
Okay. So it has to make a dex save. It's got to make a dexterity save? Yeah. All right, let's get its things up here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Get him. <laughs> it is pretty good. At, it is pretty good with its dex. Uh, so it is going to take half damage. Um, oh, sorry. It's a strength save, I think. Oh, strength. I think it should be dex for half damage. I don't know. I, I don't know. Let me. I'm pretty sure. Let me just check burning hands on the SRD. Uh, is yeah, dexterity. Yeah. Okay. okay so how much damage is it, is it taking? Eleven. Yes. All right. Yep. Cool. Uh, let me just check its HP. Yeah. Okay. You. It doesn't matter. Even though it. Ta even though it sort of dodges out of the way of some of it, the fire licks around this thing, and you just hear a small ah! as its wings burn <laughs> off, and this thing is <laughs> toasted to a cinder. <laughs> Wrecked. Fire is good against these things. That's what we learned. <laughs> yeah. That. So that thing. That thing is long gone. <laughs> Anything else you want to do with your turn? Um, no, not right now. Okay, cool. Uh, we are going back over here to the one that belted uh, uh, Daylon with ice, uh, and so it is going to. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Look out, Daylon! <laughs> uh, it is going to see if it recharges its breath. Give me a second. Toasted Tinkerbell. <laughs> right. Nope, does not get its breath back, so it is going to make a claw attack against you. For a seven. Um, against me? Daylon. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Have a miss. Cool. Let me just put some HP in here. Uh... Okay, cool. Uh, then we are at you. It is your turn. What do you want to do, Mr. Pegasus? I want to nay them whip. Reel up and stand on two feet and nay with a little, little push attack. Hoof yep. attack! Hoof attack! Dun, 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 Go for it. <laughs> Hoof man. 21 will definitely hit. Hoof dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to channel my inter monk, inner monk Pegasus, and use a key, key to just <laughs> obliterate. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I just want to kick this thing into the wind and just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll, roll me some some hoof flurry damage. <laughs> just like eating a carrot full of horse, like a, a bit of sugar or something. And horse is like <laughs> getting horny. All right, eight damage. Is that that's with your flurry? No. Eleven damage. All right, this thing <laughs> this thing is pretty this thing is pretty small. So you're you're lucky that you kind of smack it at all. Uh, it's kind of dodging and weaving, trying to get out of the way. But you it, it takes some solid kicks to the face uh, as you send it reeling through the air. Um, this uh, this strange ice creature. Uh, and yeah, it's. I mean, you've dealt some solid hits to it, though. It is. It is pretty small, so it's hard to tell exactly how it's doing. Uh, anything else, or is that your turn? That's for you. Okay. Um, done. I was expecting it more, more hoof, less. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Douglas, oh, as you kind of. You've turned to see this thing that stabbed you. It's actually going to sort of fly up a, a little bit and back, and you see it grab something and just throw it at the ground at your feet. And as this little rock that it throws hits the ground, there's a crack like thunder. I think I may actually have a... No, you won't hear it, but uh, there is a crack like thunder. A generous bestowal. And it sounds like that, which is the sound of someone donating. Sorry, I, oh, I would. Okay. Oh shit! Uh, so yeah, we know we know about the audio issues. I don't know what we can do about that one. Uh, it's one at Askins, and he's running a stream today, so I don't know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> was that what the that was the donation was for? <laughs> um, I guess what you can do, Askin, is like go on OBS settings and look at that because I don't know. Is it usually a problem on your stream? No. 
day, and I don't know why I appear from normally, but I will. Uh, uh, I hit you guys five pounds as the audio demons be gone. Of course, you can uh, look underneath donating Raker's role on the birthday table, the wild magic table, hallucination table. So uh, go ahead and uh, decide what you'd like to uh, happen here. Um, if you got to see us and if you see a black screen, then I recommend you uh, make sure you're on a uh, press F5. <laughs> That's usually an issue which makes the black screen to me on your Twitch to be a common fix. Um, but yeah, I don't know about the audio stuff. Like I there's too many variables on my computer to to fix them all in the middle of the show. I'm sorry, so guys. After this, after this game, we'll go down and we'll fix them. We'll come back up for the next session. So uh, we'll try and uh, yeah, yeah, figure stuff out at a, uh, a reasonable time. But we're in a combo right now, so uh, all right. So you uh, so this thing there's a crack like thunder and it sort of rings in your ears. It doesn't really like it doesn't um do anything to you uh you know mechanically like it's not. It just kind of, you know, you're shaken for a second. Um, you're, but you do, you do know that if there was any sort of anyone lurking or that had not been aware of this uh, this fight that had started, they are certainly aware now. And right. uh, that is going to be his turn, Douglas. What do you want to do? Uh, hitch, look underneath on the donation table stuff, and you'll be able to find it there. Um, yeah, it might be the case here. Yeah, Hallucination <laughs> table. Yes, it may be the case that you have to uh, turn off OBS and then uh, reset it to um, to be able to make that money stuff work. So we'll do that after the stream. Um, so uh, on my turn, I'm going to breathe by uh, lightning on this one. So I'm going to breath weapon. Uh, so I'm going to use lightning um, and a DC 12 dexterity saving throw on uh, this. This one here. All right, dexterity saving throw coming up. Uh, Give it to me. Give it he to rolls me. a t he rolls a ten. <laughs> so that is not enough. Um, so roll me some damage. Uh, he is gonna take three d ten damage. Yes, he is. He right on and says sounds like something's auto adjusting the sound. If you've got something else in control of your sound, that might be something which is. Uh... Yeah, it's uh, it's voice meter. I could I could do um, turn it off like. Turn it, off, so turn it off. No, no, I'd have to actually physically reset my audio driver if I do. Gotcha. It, it's a mixer program. It's yeah, I use it for my games. He only uh, takes nine. Okay, let me uh, let me get his. Three D ten or nine? That's not right. Uh well, it does not matter because it nine is enough to nine? fry him as the he is caught by this electricity breath and he's just <laughs> like his little form is. Just like, and you he just like once your breath lets up you see this smoking little uh you know little pixie sitting in the air and he just drops with a thud into the snow nice take that you fucking pixie thing all right anything else you want to do dragon. Right, right. anything else you want to do uh, i'm going to move actually yeah uh, i'm going to move uh, this one's dead right this one here yeah yeah he's dead i got to Move in to help Daylon. Okay. We're fighting that one. All right. Yeah. At the top of the round, before Catherine gets a chance to go, um, you guys hear kind of a, uh, you hear a sound echoing among over the the bellowing winds. It sounds like a uh, like some sort of growling. <sighs> <sighs> And uh, as you as, as you kind of hear this thundering, like crushing of ice underfoot, um, you guys, you Douglas, you just have a chance to catch. Uh, let me put this on the nope. Me. You just. I am very angry right now, and I could really deal with killing some more pixies. You just see. You have a chance to see over around oh, this shit. tree that's next to you as this large lumbering. Uh, troll-looking creature just emerges from ne the portal, oh. and it's kind of he creaking its back and hefting its spear, and it says, Who dares disturb my portal? Are you, Teb? <coughs> and as it kind of gr uh, as it grits <laughs> its teeth and kind of 
uh, glares at you. Its kind of mouth creaks open in almost a smile with these tusks curling around. It says, Wouldn't you like to know? And then uh, I am Take going to go ahead. And, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some initiative on this for this guy. Um, uh, so I like Walter on the hallucination table. Yes. All right. Is, is, that, a, is that a thing? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. So, let me take a channel feed. The hallucination table is a D50. So I will roll one D50 and we'll see what happens. So uh, let's have a look. Um, you rolled a. Did I, I roll a one or did I mess it up? Because the hash, the sport slash. Let's see. Does it just. Yeah, it just does one. Okay. That's okay. Slash. So yeah. uh, 20. So on a 20, clowns is what it says, all in caps. <laughs> okay. So I'm, Hallucinating clowns at this point. So you, uh, you see this, you see this creature stride out from the forest, uh, and what would be, what would be an intimidating sight, um, is kind of all of a sudden, like as it stands and sort of rears up, you see tumbling out on either side are these cartwheeling clowns, and like these jester suited people that just sort of, you know, they do cartwheels and they spring, and when they land, they just sort of like. Like around him, like presenting the this creature to you. <laughs> I can't make anything worse. I know, right? Fucking clowns attacking me! Oh my god, no! What? <laughs> and uh, and because uh, because he rolled a twenty-three on his initiative, he's actually just going to take his turn to sort of stride up towards you guys. Uh, and you guys can now you guys can all see him. Uh, I will go ahead and show you what you're looking at. Uh, apparently the Twitch list song is messing around, but I don't know. Uh, XP is a red knight's three pounds. Here's Asgur nat 20 for the first attack from the troll. <laughs> <laughs> very, very generous. Yes! <laughs> Revenge yes. the grandpa. Thank you, XP, so much. <laughs> you clearly do not like these guys very much, because <laughs> that could easily go very badly for them. Uh, okay, so as you guys see this guy striding up to you, he readies his spear uh, and grins. Douglas sees clowns ushering his way. <laughs> that is going to be Go his... clowns, quick! <laughs> That's going to be his turn. Uh, Catherine, how do you react to this situation? Catherine? <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, was it just Douglas that sees the clowns? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just him. It's just him hallucinating, not you. Like, Guys, clowns! Turn the phone! Turn the phone! I think he's gone crazy. Anyways, <laughs> hold on. Let me see if I have clowns in my. You go ahead. I'm I'm checking something. Custard pie elevation. No, not the custard pie. <laughs> It's got one of those like flowers, which is like squirting water at me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm uh. Ever. That. You enter the giveaway like this. Click on this link here. There you go. Let's see if I don't want to cast. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna probably. Yeah, I'm gonna cast Scorching Ray using up one of my level two spell slots. Um, so I'm just. I'm going to click it three times because it's three rays. Okay, yeah, go for it. Do you have, to, you have to roll a spell attack, right? <laughs> a nat 20 will definitely hit him with your <laughs> with your Scorching Ray. Get him. Uh, so you, you hit him, you do uh, a whole bunch of damage. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and add up your we'll add up your damage. You've got because uh, the nat 20 is a is a crit. Uh, I don't, wait, do you have to roll to hit for each ray or just one and then it takes all the damage? Let me check the spell. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. Let me check right now. Uh, Scorching Ray, you f uh, make a ranged spell attack for each ray. Okay. Okay, so it's just yeah. the one. So you so one hits, but it is a crit. So yeah. Nice. Uh, go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and describe how you you lance this guy with your Scorching Ray? Um, I'm gonna just at first gonna be a little bewildered by like Douglas like ranting and raving about clowns. I'm just gonna be like, okay, whatever, and I'm just going to. Uh, Kind of, because I was looking at the uh, other pixie, and I'm gonna kind of just like spin around and like <laughs> the rays. 
Yeah, so as you, you wheel around and you just kind of lance the ray out of your finger, it's this it's fire that just spews in a straight line towards this troll, smashes right, like lances right into his chest, and he is he is scorched by uh, with a whole bunch of damage. I didn't set his HP, but I should. Um, uh, as the fire set damage that only three, hits. that would do. What? Three or four HP. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. uh, so he uh, he is going to take what is it? Six plus eight is um, fourteen. Uh, he's going to take fourteen fire damage, and that would be the end of it, except for the fact that he lets out a scream as the fire kind of catches on his fur. He says, <laughs> uh, and we, as he is, he is kind of lit on a little bit on fire. Um, you don't know much about trolls, but you know they're not fond. They're not fond of fire. <laughs> so, uh, as, as anything else you want to do on your turn? Uh, nah. I'll just, uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, so, as that happens, uh, we're gonna see if this guy gets his, uh, his ice back. He does not. Uh, so he is going to, uh, he's gonna sort of, f uh, fly... Uh, yeah, I guess he's actually gonna fly over the, uh, up and over the igloo and try and kind of get away so he can prepare something, um... Daylon, what do you want to do? So I'm going to pretend like I don't know that there is a critical coming. I don't want to metagame. <laughs> and I'm going to go with my original plan, which was I'm going to jump in the air and flying double hoof attack. Into <laughs> do it. Go, go, go for it. <laughs> uh, the old double hoof. The old double hoof. Yeah, the old one too. <laughs> Get him. Oh Go ahead and roll me an attack. Roll the attack. Okay. I was going to do the movement on the yeah. map. I got you. It's fine. Let me roll attack. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> neither of those are going to hit. Oh god. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you um you uh kind of barrel over to this thing, but he's just kind of smacks your host out of the way with his spear as he's kind of writhing around on fire. Um you, you don't hit, I your hooves do not land uh and yeah, we will see what happens next. Douglas, you have seen uh, Daylon charge in amidst the clowns. Uh-huh. <sighs> yeah, I'm like, wow, he's a brave guy. Um, <laughs> take on all these clones at once. Uh, I'm going to use my... Uh, I'm going to use my repulsion breath. Um, okay. And say, oh, God, that's repulsive. Uh, and uh, it's a... Uh, 30 foot cone, each creature in the area must succeed in a DC 12 strength saving throw. In fact, there's no point in me doing that. Fuck that. Um, <laughs> I didn't read it. I thought he was going to do damage. I don't want to move him. Uh, I want to do lightning, but I've already used it. So. You you can roll. Uh, do me a favor, roll me a D6. Because you have to yeah. roll to see if you recharge. Yes! Five, you get your lightning breath back. There we go. So, DC 12 deck saving throw on Daylon, two jesters, and. The jesters. Uh, oh, well, the jesters are. are they're going to. They're of course immune to it. No, like, no, they take the damage. No, they, they, you, they. Oh, they take the damage. They don't. They are unfazed. Oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> they're just some good clowns. Um. Yes, that's why. That's how terrifying they are. Wow. Uh, uh. Okay. So Daylon and the uh, the troll are going to need to, meet, to make me a Dex saving throw. Sorry, Daylon. Well, the the troll rolls a nineteen. Oh fuck! <laughs> Daylon. Yeah, Daylon needs to roll a strength save. Twenty-one. Oh. There we go. <laughs> okay, so luckily both of these guys are gonna take half damage. Uh, Forty foot. Oh, okay. So the 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 line is only five feet wide, so you can actually do it without hitting Daylon, because it says the breath is only five feet wide. 
Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. So you can. You, oh, it does. My good roll. My it only. does. It does street. Well, you're not taking any damage from. Him. Uh, so go ahead and roll me the damage on the breath. That's three d ten. Right. Three d ten. Hopefully you roll better than before. So okay. Eleven. If it's halved. Uh, it is halved because he rolled pretty well. So he's going to take yeah. six six lightning damage that kind of streaks past him and burns a. Uh, you know, just a streak across his side as he growls in pain. He says, This is my portal! Uh, and anything else? Is that your turn? Um. Uh, oh, uh, uh, I'll move in. Okay. I'll move in here, I guess. <laughs> uh, B. Okay, so top <laughs> of the round. Give me a second. I just got to check something here. Um. Move in so I don't land on a clown to attack. <laughs> so screaming in pain as his f flesh burns. He unfortunately he hasn't been lit completely on fire. Uh, otherwise, but his reaction might be a little bit different if he was. But um, he is going to reel from that and he's going to kind of spin around with his spear uh, and he is going to make a spear attack at. Douglas, who just shocked him and is charging right at him. Uh, he's going to use his nat 20 on it, because, yeah. you yeah. know. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and... Why not? Well, he rolled a nat 20 anyway. Uh, so let's see if we can get some damage on that. That is going to be a total of 16 piercing damage against you. Alright. Uh, and because it is a successful critical hit, uh, I need you to roll me a wisdom save. Okay then, my wisdom is zero, so just a straight 1d26. Alright, so you failed the wisdom save, which means uh, as this, uh, as he kind of, um, sorry, let me, let me get zoom up. As he, he whips around with the spear, kind of catch it and jams right through your, like, right into the side of your dragon scales and penetrating through you, the spear, um, goes right up to like the crossbar that prevents it from going in all the way and as it's as you feel the impact of this uh this blade you know going into your chest yeah. you all of a sudden you feel like your wings and your arms and everything just sort of lock up in place as you are successfully targeted by a hold person spell you are paralyzed uh. <laughs> Paralyzed I, with clowns. Clowns. Yes, clowns. and as yes, as you are paralyzed, the terror sets oh. in as these little jesters just start dancing around you in a circle. Wow. <laughs> you can't do anything about it. Uh, <laughs> as he and as he kind of uh, he rips the spear out of you violently. He says, "You will not get past me." Okay. Nope. <laughs> uh, Catherine, what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to walk up to... Oh, I don't think I can drink it. <laughs> no, I can't. Hmm? What are you trying to do? I'm going to go... Wait. Damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you, what's up? Never mind. I can't go. Actually, I'll move up to, like, here. But, um... Uh, I guess I will... How many shall pass? You shall not pass. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna use Scorching Ray on him again. <laughs> okay. So it was pretty effective last time. Go ahead and roll yeah. me those three I mean, Scorching Rays. Unfortunately, <gasps> a one... Ah, doesn't look like any of those are going to hit. <laughs> no luck. So your, your Scorching Rays just sort of you wide as you're trying desperately not to hit your friends um, we are going to get to what this guy does in a second because uh, he is planning something but it won't happen just yet Pegasus Daylon what do you want to do gonna kind of kind of recover out of the snow and then do like jump up in the air again and kind of just sweep down with with the hooves trying to cover what it was I attempted to do last time Okay, yeah. Being impressive. Let's get some hoof attacks against this guy. God damn it! Hoof man! <laughs> so I, 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 think, I think everyone in this group needs needs some inspiration if someone wants to get on that because these guys <laughs> these guys are not doing it today. No! 
it's not happening. Uh, all right, so you're once again your hoofs are. Uh, you can't quite get the being a horse thing down. It's you're not used to sort of the way the arms bend, so it's it's difficult. Um, uh, Douglas, do you want to show him how it's? Oh no, you're paralyzed. I'm paralyzed. You right get to now. make a sa you make a, sa a save at, uh, at the end of your turn against it. Uh, I can roll to recharge fire. Uh, you breath, you maybe. can do that, yeah. Um, uh, so nope, not on that one. I can repulse him though. I could repulse you him. You do have you do have a use of your repulsion, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So I will attempt to repulse him. So DC twelve strength saving throw on him. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do that, and then do me a favor and roll the uh, the wisdom save at the end of your turn. Wisdom save, yeah. Okay, it's just a one d twenty, so an eleven this time around. I uh, don't think that's enough. I'll check in one second. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's very good. <laughs> Strength saving throw. He rolls an eight. Gee, yeah, that's bad, which is good for us. Okay. So he is repulsed, um, and he is sent flying uh, thirty feet away from me. Okay. Which is a Fair clock, actually. So, a uh, few feet away from me is all the way over here. Well, unfortunately, between him and there, oh, this tree should not be there anymore. My, I gotta take that away. Uh, between <laughs> him and where he should be sent to uh, is a large. Is these things right here are large uh, icicles that are kind of jutting okay. outwards. Like if you've ever <laughs> seen, like on a fort, how they stick those wood things out to keep people Palisades, away. Yeah. Sort of. It's sort of like that, and so he's going to be shoved in very hard into those. Nice. Um, so nice. uh, I'm going to go ahead and give me one. Get him. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. So the he is shoved right here, and he's going to take a whole bunch of... He's going to take some damage. Um, we'll call it 2d10. Yeah. He, yeah, he's going he's gonna to take a chunk of damage. Um, as he is slammed into these, and you can see sort of some of the sharp and hard-packed ice is, like, skewering through him as he, he uh, uh, like, grunts in pain uh, as he grips one of them, and, uh, did you want to, oh, no, you can't move, so. No, the only thing I actually want to do is thank Billy Sag for following, welcome, Billy Sag, for following you, sir, Ari Gentle Sag, and a scholar, thank you for joining us today. Um, Looks like we're just four followers away, I think. Oh, damn! Four followers away from a viewer decision where you guys get to decide anything which happens in our game. So uh, you will be able to throw some crazy nonsense out. That's pretty good fun. <laughs> um, all right, then. So I am going to try and save. I didn't save. No, so you that's didn't. the end of my turn. Yeah. Seeing as I'm paralyzed. Uh, so on his turn, he's going to be like, uh, he's going to say, This is not enough as he pulls himself off the ice Ooh. skewers and you can actually see kind of some of the wounds on it that you've inflicted on his body begin to sort of close up uh, and as he does that he is going to he is going to take a stride towards Daylon and he's going to make a spear attack Oh man, and thanks so much to Valisig777 for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You are a gentle Vasilis. And <laughs> Scholar, thank you for following. <laughs> like a Vasili? I don't know. Sounds like a cool name. Uh, we putting us just, what, like three followers away from that view decision? Oh man. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright. <laughs> He's going to make a spear attack against Daylon. An 11. Uh, I'm guessing All right. Alright. The this this kind of uh, it's a it's a pretty large spear. It's actually much bigger and much more nicely crafted than yours. Uh, just sort of slides right past you, kind of turn, and you get a you actually get a glimpse of its now bloody but uh, still very well made uh, craftsmanship. Um, all right, and he kind of as he glares in your face, sort of these tusks uh, creating a very a very grim facade. All right, Catherine, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to... Fire! I'm going to... Um, I, I kind of want to cast Burning Hands, but it's a 15-foot cone, and Daylon will get... You could, you, could okay. you could maneuver around so he doesn't get hit. Like, go over here or whatnot? Yeah, yeah, you could maneuver around to you know to to flank him or something, so Daylon's not gonna get caught in the in the cone. I, I, I was here, right? So I was fifteen. 
Nice. And thanks so much to Crypt Stick for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You are a gentle stick and a scholar. <laughs> a cryptic one, I'll but welcome. Just come okay. on. Why not? Let's see. Uh... Just killed Daylon. He isn't doing anything anyway. Ellie Giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted by <laughs> Harry there. <laughs> <laughs> <Rip. laughs> Eddie's down. He is. <laughs> and he's down. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so as he he's gonna roll his dexterity saving throw uh, successfully uh, for half damage. So that's gonna be ten fire damage against him, which is reduced. But he is still, again, the fire kind of arcs over his body and causes him to scream in pain uh, as he he does not like that. Um, you know, the, the fire is clearly having the most effect against him. Anything else you want to do, or is that it? Um, I think... Uh, Kira is from SPMG and Scott Kira. Shout out the channel so you can uh, find out where she is. There we go. What's up, Seiko? How's it going, man? Alright. I'm done. <laughs> cool. All right, one second. No worries. Be happy. So we're actually doing pretty well here in this fight. So catch you guys up real quick. So we've got the the free pixies are down. Now we're fighting this big troll dude. He's got an awesome token, by the way. Um, actually, isn't one of the pixies still alive? Is yeah, it? it's, it's it's is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been kind of kind of running away. Um, and so yeah. as it uh as it, its turn is gonna come up. Um. It is actually, you kind of, you catch, uh, Catherine, you can see past the ogre and past the tree, um, uh, oh. it's, it's sort of in the process of just sort of sitting there doing some kind of summoning magic that is, uh, it is it, taking would a little I, while. Would I be able to tell that he's doing, like, a ritual? Uh, yeah, it looks like it's taking a little while to do, like, it's not just a, a spell that he's casting at you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. You're not sure what in particular, though. Okay. <sighs> All right. Uh, so, Pegasus, what would you like to do? <laughs> <laughs> I want to try that again. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm considering. Re rethinking your <laughs> rethinking your life. <laughs> I think I think I think my I'm questioning my agility, and I'm gonna I'm gonna recover this time and just kind of kind of gallop, and uh, maybe look to look to disarm. Is a disarm just like a? a it's an, an opposed strength uh, roll. Oh fuck that! Um, I'm just gonna gallop normally. And I actually gallop faster than I fly. Uh, no, I don't. Wait, let me double check. No, I fly faster. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for the, the the fly attack the third time. It just makes sense to me in my mind to to attack with a certain amount of velocity. All right. So I, I, I ruffle. I ruffle if, my. If you'd my like it, if you battle. you could you could. Uh, well, no, you can't really. Um, never mind. No, I just, for some reason, it makes sense to Daylon, aside from meta, he just, like... So, uh, before, while you roll some attacks, correct me if I'm wrong, Will, but it looks like we are up it to... Looks... It does indeed, because we need to mm -hmm. thank our friends for Reach Sidestep, as well as Reflective Manta Ray for following. Welcome, my friends, to Adventure, both gender yeah. and scholars. Thank you for following. So, we have hit our follower goal of 3,900 followers, but it's just 100 followers away from 4,000 at Fat 4K. Um, but that means that you guys get a viewer decision in chat. So, underneath this line here in the chat, you guys get to decide what happens next. So, throw your ideas in chat. So, what could happen next? I don't know. The troll becomes a giant Pegasus monster and starts becoming the best friend of Daylon and yes, Alex. Exactly. There, there you go. <laughs> there, uh, there you go. So, just, stuff like that could happen. We'll put them into the straw poll. The most popular one will happen. We'll go vote them all in the minute once we've got all our ideas in. So get them in and I'll start putting them into a straw poll as we speak. Yeah, share those, uh, share those viewer decision ideas, guys, because the last time we had a viewer decision, you guys turned these, par these people in this party into 
random monsters from the monster manual. Uh, who knows what could happen this time? <laughs> so, uh, will I will leave you to uh, to collate those unless yes, you indeed. have a mod that's doing it. I don't know. Uh, all right, so you mind. were rolling an attack, were you? Doug, uh, yes. Go ahead. I'm Dale. gonna I'm gonna just kick the snow off. I'm determined. Yeah. I, I, I pierce my eyes. I squint my 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 horse eyes and I'm just like mm. and then I'm gonna go up for the attack again yeah do it <laughs> oh what was the next someone advantage please wow <laughs> <laughs> no, so... it wasn't that one was it 20 <laughs> it could have been it could have oh, been oh you are so bad at being a horse <laughs> <laughs> you are the most ungrateful Pegasus ever. <laughs> oh lord! Oh my oh. god! Uh, all right, so you you just sort of with renewed gusto, you <laughs> wings in the air as you go to trample on this thing, and you just you hit the tree. Your wings, you just like I can't hover, and you just tumble to the ground in buried <laughs> in the <laughs> snow. It is oh, it is man. not a good scene. It's it's a little bit better because we do have no future UK with us. Welcome, my friend, to the adventure. You sir are a gentle future and a scholar from the UK, the best place in the world. And thank you so much to Classy Lemons for following. You are a gentle lemon and a scholar. Thanks for joining us. Oh boy, we're starting this uh, road to four cave with some uh, with some hype. This is a good start. Some of these we're getting in right now are pretty great. Just so you know, involving yeah. ice otters, my personal favorite so far. Well, uh, well, Douglas, it is your turn. So why don't you go ahead and this guy's sure. been pretty injured. So why don't you go ahead and show them how it's done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. So um, I say, get out of the way, clones! You goddamn. And I just start attacking. You could you could go around the side to flank it, so maybe Daylon isn't so useless. Next sure, time. I'll, I'll flank the troll. <laughs> Twenty three versus okay. armor class. Twenty three will definitely hit. What are you doing? Just a claw attack or a bite? Uh, it's a claw. It's a bite. Yeah. Do so you, so do you have a? Uh, do you have multi attack? I think. No. It... Yeah, I don't think so. No, no, just the bite. I'm sorry. My bad. Yeah. All right. So it's a one to ten plus three, which is seven damage. Okay. So just kind of come Seven. here, you. Nope, did not mean to do that. Uh, Why did I flee under cover of night, Florebo Colonies? For uh... <laughs> did it all for a go, man. All right. So as we go to the top of the round, the uh, the creature, the troll, it's kind of you. You expect to see its wounds sealing up, but the fire damage that Catherine did to it uh, keep prevents it from regenerating. As it is going to swing around one more time with its spear. At Douglas, uh, that is a twenty-one, <laughs> twenty-one oh, against you. Uh, twenty-one's a hit. All right, some spear. Wrapping around him like a fish, and he's just maybe I'm so I'm too oafish to actually attack. He's like this guy isn't really hurting. Me. Yeah, he he hasn't he, you haven't hit him yet, so he doesn't care about you. Oh uh, god! So ten piercing damage to you, Douglas. Ouch! Oh damn, that's not good. Actually, I'm on six. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you've taken some hits, uh, but as he kind of, as he rears around, he's just looking around at all of you, he says, How could you, how could you think to stand against me? Uh, I mean, you're pretty ugly. <laughs> okay, uh, so that is going to be his turn. Uh, Catherine, what do you want to do? Um, okay, so noticing that this uh, pixie is... Yeah. Probably casting a ritual. I'm going to uh, go and disrupt that. Sure. How do you want to do it? Uh, so I'm gonna let's see. Here, here. Okay, so I'm gonna move to here, and I'm just gonna cast Eldritch Blast at it. All right, go. Roll me a spell attack. Uh, are we good with the straw poll? Is that all good? Yeah, I'm gonna drop in chat now. I've got eight cool. ideas, so that's uh, <laughs> some of these are so great. Let's go ahead and check these out here, and I'll throw them into the chat for you guys. So um, there you go, plenty of straw pots for you. Go ahead and pick up one of those, and uh, the most popular one is gonna happen. Sorry to say, go being belay on that one. Sorry, dude, but uh, we'll have another one very soon when we hit 25 retweets. They've even tweeted out already. Check out the retweet stuff. They've even entered our giveaway for the players' handbook. I encourage you to do so. It's only a little while to 
to uh, enter into that. And all, all of you guys have a good chance. And of course, if you haven't followed them, do join us and uh, hit that follow button for another one. We hit 4,000. Of course, when we hit these like 1,000 followers, we tend to do like extra crazy stuff. So I think the last time we did a viewer decision in every single game throughout the week. So um, let's, uh, let's make that happen. <laughs> All right, so, so you need to. I need a D twenty plus charisma to hit with the Elder's Blast. It didn't actually uh, roll that. Oh. Yeah, I believe it's D twenty plus charisma plus your proficiency bonus, which is two. Roll. <laughs> Want to vote for mine, but Artus. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even looked. I'm, I gotta look at the uh, the thing. Uh, I saw a deck of many things. I like that one. <laughs> Ice Otter Colony invades. When the party embarks on a diplomatic mission to aid their might to their own, mm. and their might to their own. Suddenly... <laughs> Alright, unfortunately the Eldritch Blast does not strike <laughs> this creature and disrupt its ritual. Um, Damn. Damn. <laughs> man, a lot of love for the deck of many things today. It's a very, very potent... A, um, it is! Right, it's... It, it did only good things the last time we used it, so... <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh, did, I, did you watch it? on the 24 hour stream? We got the deck of many fingers came up again, and I, and I said, Whatever you do, do not roll 22 because you die. Like, whatever you do, just it's a 1d22, just don't roll 22. <laughs> the 22 is you are fucked, like, you die, you, your did soul someone... is sealed in a box, and everything about you is gone. And then the first roll was I rolled a 22. <laughs> it was immediately after I said that, it was the worst thing. That was all, that's awesome. Uh, all right, so. Nice. Uh, so, the, well, no, the ritual isn't going to complete just yet. It's got a couple more rounds on that, so uh, that is going to, uh, it's going to keep going. Um, Daylon, what do you want to do? You have advantage on this creature because you are now flanking it. Do you think you can make it work? Do you <laughs> think you can make it work? I'm just going to charge it. Hoof man. I'm going to charge it on foot. <laughs> yeah, no, to batter this thing. I just start, to start clawing at the ground, kicking up snow. Um, no, I'd almost miss my turn with how much snow I'm kicking up, like, foregoing half of the <laughs> half of Yeah, all, you, all your movement is just spent just <laughs> showing how angry you are. Go ahead and roll me, roll me your attack with advantage. Kick it. Man. 16. A 16 just hits. Yeah. Get him! Oh man! Yeah, let's do that. Let's do the the wombo combo. Yes. <laughs> yes. Redundant UK believe. believes in Daylon. We you all just believe. Gotta in believe. <laughs> you just gotta believe. We all just gotta believe. All right. Nice. Four, right. Fourteen damage. Yeah. Uh, plus the two D fours. Ah, uh, nineteen. Plus, plus night. Daylon, how do you want to do this? So I'm just. Piss, kicking up all the storm, and then I do like a double hoof kick right in the ass to kind of really just push this guy forward. I'm tired of hearing him in his labored. <laughs> so I just kick him, wanting to topple him over on his face, but deal as much ass damage as I can. Yeah, you you barrel into him as he's caught unawares and as you just you just trample over him you're just now circling around on his body just back and forth just trampling him into the snow and you hear kind of the bones breaking under your hooves you hear like the gro the pained groans as he is trampled into oblivion and uh that is that is certainly the end of him uh, so he is he is Game out five. He, he is out for now. Um, <laughs> however, you guys do know that he heals, so there's only going to be one. There's probably only going to be one way of finishing that off. Um, so let me uh, let me take him off the order. Um, Flying attack, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's got <laughs> it's got to be. Um, the two day flying. So Douglas, did you? Uh, since this is this the major threat is down, do you want to do anything? Do you want to try to prevent him from uh, from healing? What do you want to do? Um, I'm gonna try and recharge my fire. Yeah, go, go for uh, it. My lightning, rather, because uh, I figure if I can get him whilst he's down, then that might really kind of burn him. If not, I'm gonna go for a little pixie. No, okay, bollocks. Uh, no, you don't so, get it. So can I just like bite his head off? 
You can, you can, he is, he is, uh, he is out, so you can do whatever you'd like. The only thing you're aware of is that he does, he does regenerate, so the only thing you right. know that stops his regeneration is fire. I also figure, like, because I've got, yeah, I've got these clowns dancing around me as well. Um, <laughs> but I'm pretty distracted by them all. What's up, Raph? Good to see you, buddy. Um, what I'm thinking is if I rip off its head, then that would also, like, get rid of its... Um, you could, yeah, you could try it. You could spend your turn doing that. Yeah, I'm gonna take, spend my turn ripping his face off and kind of like starting to eat it. Okay, so as you start chomping down on that, uh, you know, on, on that and getting it going, Catherine, uh, we're, we're not really in initiative order right now because there's no immediate threats. Do you want to, uh, do you want to just barrel into this guy and stop the ritual? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Pretty much. <laughs> I, I think I want to just like run at him and bite him. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Just, just use, use those. Right. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Unfortunately, it, uh, it, the bite does not quite hit. Um, yeah, it's you can't quite get a, uh, get a grip on it. But it does. You do sort of barrel into this thing, and it, uh, it kind of sees you, and it's startled as it's just going to rocket away into the woods. It says no, um, <laughs> as it, it stops its ritual and just flies oh, away. Man. That's the best uh, known voice. Uh, so thank you so much to Veladeb for following. Welcome to the Avenger, my friend. You sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. What's up, Scar? Scar, good to see you, my friend. Um, All right. So it runs off. Um, I chase after it. I'm like this. That's a blue. Well, pixie. you're you're, you're too busy. You're busy biting the biting through this thing's neck. Yeah, um, you gotta you gotta take. It's a it's a big creature, so you gotta take some yeah. time to chomp through its neck. Yeah, understandable. Uh, whilst that's happening, I'm going to thank Harry B. Official for following. Welcome, Harry, to the adventure you, sir. R. A. Gentle Harry and a scholar. Thank you for following the official Harry B. I heard. Not that unofficial <laughs> one, that fake, that fake Harry. Who tried Except no me. substitutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm really happy. Guys, are, oh my god. Guys, uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, I ripped his face off and dark. Sorry. Mm. Um, we should follow the blue pixie. Did you want to? Uh, did you guys want to stop and t do anything? Before? Like the the blue no, pixie just va just vanished into the snow. You it, you have no idea how you would even follow it yeah. without without I, I kind sight. Of chase after it for a moment. I'm like I come back. It's like no, the little the wee bastard's gone. Whew, that was a good fight. I feel much better for killing things. I have to say. I'm just gonna keep kicking it in the ass. All right. Um, as you as you guys are <laughs> as you guys are kind of uh, Douglas as you you circle around and kind of come back you know after having lost the the pixie um, there there's a mo there's kind of a moment uh, to catch your breath or if you guys wanted to do anything you're welcome to um, however uh, Daylon as you uh, uh, actually we'll, we'll get we'll get to that in a second uh, yeah if you guys wanted to do anything around here um, you're welcome to. Um, I guess I searched the troll. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really wearing too much of anything. I mean, it's it was it was kind of a troll. The only thing, the only obvious thing on it appeared to be this uh this large spear that it was wielding. Ah, huh, okay. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go nudge him as he picks up the spear with my my horse face. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of like walk around the perimeter, with, like the boulders and stuff. And, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, so also uh, along with the spear, you find uh, that in a, an empty belt, there's an empty belt pouch as well as a, a chain with a key. Oh, nice! What do I see in this little cave? Uh, so inside the let me uh, let me do this. I have a uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, so inside the cave, uh, you find. There are there look like two bearskin rugs that kind of cover most of the damp floor in this cave, surrounded by crates, barrels, and other supplies. Uh, the ceiling is kind of rising 15 feet overhead, where icicles of frozen condensation hang from sharp stalactites. Okay. Uh, can I just search the crates for anything of use? Like yeah, sure. Potion? Roll me a uh, roll me a perception check. Okay. 
I'm gonna let me have a look around here actually, see what I'm gonna get up to. Okay. I'm gonna be busy eating this thing actually. I'm gonna start wolfing it down. Yeah, you're you're chop <laughs> you're chomping away on it. I'm really hungry. Like I'm a dragon now. Uh so uh Catherine, <laughs> you, you, you look for a while and you, I mean you don't you kinda take your time. Um it looks like most of the stuff here is um you know, is is food. Uh, it looks like, you know, supplies that have been stolen from people. Uh, you assume this is probably the troll's hut because it's not particularly well kept. And, you know, it's the only place big enough for him. Um, but, you know, you can see there's about 30 days or so worth of common meals here, though. And, you know, some of them have been pre preserved by the cold. Um, you, uh, you also find among the debris, there appears to be a large lockbox. Oh, lockbox, hey. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any sleight of hand, uh, so I'm going to come back to these guys and just be like, and, uh. Oh, sorry, I'm just, <clears throat> that's the last bit. The toes are kind of a bit tough. Mm, Ew. Totally <laughs> <laughs> um, I found a lockbox in what seems to be, uh, this carcass's previous home. <laughs> oh, well, anything in the in the cave thing? I imagine it lives down in a hole or something. Uh, yeah, I haven't attempted to open the box yet, but I just want to let you guys know. So, wanna... oh, okay, I, got, I got a key right here. I like lift up my hooves. <laughs> let's go. Let's go find the box, and we'll open it together. Case is like a trap or something. Well, you have I mean, you have the you box. Could just, like, oh, we have it with us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay, I brought it. Okay, I brought it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I said, well, let's let's open it up here. Uh, seeing as I'm the only one who seems to actually probably have like proper hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, by you... the way, Askren, this might be a good point to bring in the viewer decision. Oh no, no, I had I had that planned already. I know when it's okay, coming cool. in. Good, good, good. Okay. Because there's there's a thing I want to happen that might be ruined a little bit if we go for the viewer decision first. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I you guess I hold it, you can open it up. Okay. <laughs> Try. Alright, you want to use the key? Oh, there is a key? There was a key. Yeah, you found a key. Oh, okay, okay. The, yeah, so he, uh, he hands you the key that he pulled off the, the corpse, and it, yeah. it fits the lockbox right away. As the chest clicks open, you can see there are four uh, glass vial, you know, potion vials inside, um, uh, as well as four large, uh, kind of blue quartz crystals that have been polished and shaped. Um, there is a silver, uh, kind of, you know, one of those tiara-like crowns, it's called a diadem. Um, there is a, a very large diamond, uh, kind of rough cut diamond, um, a jeweled necklace, Oh wow! <laughs> uh, there is a rolled-up painting, uh, three sapphire rings, and uh, a sort of a very, very heavily decorated sword scabbard, um, as well as a kind of a small scrimshaw sculpture of like little sprites that are dancing around a uh, a pipe, um, as well as a there's a large pile of silver and gold coins. Do you think this might have belonged to uh, the lady? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big troll types. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They, they like to hoard gems. You know, there's no way it could be a... That does sound right, actually. Maybe yeah. that could be the case. That could be the case, yeah. Well, um, Andy was evil, right, Douglas? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yes. I mean, the troll. He's definitely a bad guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, glad we all agree. Definitely about All right. Well, uh, seeing as I'm the lady of the group, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna help myself to some of these gems. <laughs> yeah, you oh, can. Whoa, you... whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, sometimes Douglas likes to feel pretty. I like. It got, these match my eyes. So I like to bring one up on a claw. <laughs> Look. Uh... <laughs> Actually, you're right. The sapphire really brings out your. Uh... I like... Dragon eyes. <laughs> I've got like a big, um, like dragon ear, and so like I, I take a claw, I like pierce it. With, like, <laughs> just one of one of the, one of the yeah. frills. You just put and an I, earring in one of the frills. Uh, and I put an earring in one of the frills in my like. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, 
as you guys are as you guys are uh, kind of peel, peering through the loot, all of a sudden the wind just this pouring been pouring out of this uh, this portal behind you start whips up even you know even loud like louder and more heavy. And as you all kind of turn over your shoulder to sort of look in the direction of this portal right over here that's sitting in the middle of this clearing, um, yeah. You you hear like a loud noise of wind and snow and even sort of black smoke that just starts billowing out of it. Okay, pick. Uh, whoa, it's doing things. Uh, magic girl. Um, any ideas? I, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I don't know how to stop the. Thing from happening. I figured it might just happen once we killed the bad guy. Um. <laughs> as as you guys are talking, uh, all of a sudden there's uh, you hear kind of a uh, just a rush of air as a you see barreling out of the portal uh, appears to be like as, as a surge of wind suddenly blasts from this swirling vortex. Um, there's a stinging spray of snow and ice, and suddenly, a lo like a horseman clad in coal black armor with curling ram's horns on its head, uh, barrels through the portal astride a black warhorse that is kind of surrounded by coal tendrils of cold, dark mist, and it looks something like this. Is it uh, would I know if the warhorse is a male or female? <laughs> Not at first glance, no. Uh, but this like, thing, I, this I like thing, look under. no, this thing comes barreling out of the uh, out of the portal, just straight at you guys, and it 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 manages to get, I don't know, maybe twenty feet or something, you know, out of the portal before all of a sudden there's a poof, uh, of dark mist as the horse is gone, like mid stride, mid gallop, it just vanishes in a puff of smoke, and the rider on the horse is just sent careening into the snow, just like. On the ground, just un almost unmoving. <laughs> oh, go over and nudge him. Yeah, Th that's an entrance if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I go over to uh, with with Daylon, I guess. <laughs> Fly on over. Yeah, as you as you walk over, um, the the horseman kind of uh, lifts himself up, uh, kind of groaning weakly, and you see he's actually uh, he actually looks very very injured. Excuse me, sir. Are you, are you okay? He kind of he looks up to you. He says, "You know, putting one hand on the on the snow and ice and lifting himself up." He says, "I have made it through." Who are you? He kind of looks up and uh, with very uh, just you're looking into sort of this mask, this black armored me like night mask. Um, you know, you can't really see the face, and he says, I had a name once, but now I am simply known as her Black Midnight. I am Baba Yaga's Black Rider, the harbinger of the Witch Queen's return. Right, and I'm the fucking Prince of... Calramia. What the hell, man? You sound pretty insane, right? He says, I am I mean, one. He tripped on your way in here. Not that badass. He kind of. He, he says, He's a he, he, he kind of. Yeah. He looks up at you and just sort of very weakly, he, um, he kind of pulls the, the mask, like his helmet, off of his head. And with the like, as as he pulls it off his head and he goes to drop it to the ground, the the helmet, this metal sort of ram horn curled helmet, just disappears in a puff of smoke. And you see in what is you're actually looking into the face of a very old man, uh, a sort of a very old man that is. Uh, I thought that was a smaller version. Um, very weak, you know, and kind of out of it and he says uh he says you have been tainted by her magic and with a with a weak kind of wave of his hand there is a a kind of a a glow in the air as some sort of magical effect pulses out from him and the magic that has polymorphed you guys is dispelled 
Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, it feels I, good to not have scales anymore. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm like, I like, Phil, I, 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 we didn't ask for this. I, I was a dr- oh. I, I, I thank you. Thank you so much. Really? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That, that's kind of helpful. Just examine my beard. Very, very, like, the shitty and grin. Just like. Oh, I will oh. miss, uh, not having to walk. <laughs> he, <laughs> I grab my back and like, uh, uh. <laughs> um, he, yeah, I'm like, oh, that is uh, okay. That's kind of helpful, actually. It's kind of helpful. Thanks. He says, "You must assist me." Uh, uh, what, what, what with? I mean, I've got sixty-two as Harry here. Welcome, sixty-two as Harry. You so are a gentle Harry and a scholar. Hopefully, you do not come into conflict with Harry the official, overly official title of the names, but you're both gentle Harrys and scholars. Welcome. <laughs> he, he says, uh, the balance has been threatened, and my queen, my lady, our mother, is missing. He kind of he kind of gestures to the portal. He says. Beyond that vortex lies the land of Irisen, of eternal winter. It is Baba Yaga's realm. But I don't know who this Baba Yaga, Yaga girl is, but it sounds kind of cold uh, that over there, so why would we want to go? Baba Yaga is the witch queen, the mother of those that rule over Irison. It is by her hand that the land exists and is maintained. Every every century she returns to place a new queen on the throne. But she but she is missing and in her absence the queen Ilvana has taken over. He murdered my kin, the other horseman. I am all that remains. I'm gonna go around like, you know, Baba Yaga sounds like a load of gibberish to me. Uh, I go and examine where the portal would have would have appeared, and I start like picking at his armor to see if he's like, like authentically a a a, a dark knight. I was like. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna take a little of me to believe you inside some, uh, can trips where you just ride in here in an invisible pony. He says, uh, he, he says, This is not my appearance. As he kind of slumps back in the snow, he sort of gestures with his hand, and the armor dissipates and kind of fades away, and he appears to be wearing some sort of, uh, some sort of black robe. That uh, you know, he's not. He's not. At, you see, he's not actually an armored knight. He's really just sort of an old man. That is, um, you know, is you see now he's uh, he's got a wound in his back that is bleeding very heavily, and he he looks he looks like he's not going to last very long. Well, now you don't look cool at all. You. Oh, I I think you should have stuck with your previous one. Actually, okay. Well, um, so you're you're telling us that you know this crazy. Crazy witch bitch lady. As we said before, there was a witch behind all this. She is gonna bring winter here again? This portal is the creation of Queen Nirvana. She intends to extend the domain of winter across all the lands. This is not the only portal. So you're telling us that we have got to go through the portal to find this witch queen and kill her? It is the only way to save your lands and all the lands that she has covered in winter. Well, I told my wife that I'd be back within two days, and it's been at least three, and I turned into a kobold, a dragon along the way, and quite frankly, I'm kind of tired. You don't have any food on you, do you? Have a land of troll. Troll is a bit tough. You need more time under the uh, cooker. He kind of he kind of looks at you very weakly. He says. I have not long for this world, so I will deliver my message. That right, is all I can do for my lady. He says, the, the portal source is in the Pale Tower. 
What kind of sauce is this? Like a, a red sauce or sauce. some kind of magic sauce? I'm gonna smack Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'm, like Douglas is about to punch you back, and he, he says, stops. <laughs> he says, "Through the portals, Elvano will spread a new ice age across your world, consuming it for all eternity. For without the queen to replace her, she will rule in perpetuity. Closing the portal may will save your kingdom." But so, uh, right. So I mean, we could just go in to close the portal and just be done with that, or you know, we could take the route of heroism and try and save your world too. But that sounds like a lot of work. He says. I mean, it sounds like his world is pretty fucked anyway. So my world is not a lot. It's just uh, we are as much a part of this world as you. Irison is not. A, a, is not a different world. It is simply in a di- somewhere else far from here. But as you can see, Elvana's reach is far and powerful. The only way to stop her, you must find Baba Yaga. You, only she has the power to defeat the queen. Uh, do you have any leads as to who took her, where she went? You must use her dancing hut to find her. The hut is powerful, an artifact that can cross great distances and even travel between worlds. If you can control the hut, it can take you to Baba Yaga. And where do we find this? Elvana stole the hut when Baba Yaga disappeared. It is currently in Irison's capital of White Throne, as a symbol of her power. You must go through the portal and find the dancing hut. Okay, so it's... Okay, remind me of the witch queen's name. Let me write ba- this down. Baba, Baba Yaga. Yaga. Baba Yaga, okay. Uh, all right then. Uh, and this... Her dancing hut is what we need to find. Dancing hut. Okay. Uh, any other details that we might? Ne- it's in the capital of what? White Listen. throne. Of white throne. Okay, white throne. All right then. So, anything else that's important that if we forget, we might want to write down because you know we do forget these things sometimes. He says, the hut has many keys, objects that are attuned to it, and that can take it almost anywhere. I have secured two of these keys, but Elvana has stolen the power to prevent anyone from using the hut to find her mother. Once they are reactivated, placing the hu- the keys in the hut's cauldron will retrace Baba Yaga's path. As he kind of, um, he reaches under his robe and he, uh, he pulls, he pulls out, uh, two things. One of them appears to be a a large sort of uh, a large lock of white hair that's held together at one end by like a metal clamp. So it's sort of like a rabbit's foot but it's like Mm -hmm. hair. Um, And the other is a uh, kind of a warped leather plague doctor's mask. And he sort of weakly drops these on the snow in front of him. Dr. Caesar's plague mask, right? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> so we we need these to say with these like keys or something he says these are the keys appear to be mundane items but it disguises their true power these so that- are the ones that I have taken but they are drained only I have the power to reactivate them now well, why don't you do that then? He so, says, so there was, the second one was a plague mask, the first one was a what? A lock of hair. Lock of hair, okay. He says, will you accept responsibility for this task? I turn to the group. The old man is dying, I say that we... I guess if what he's saying is true, then we're all going to be a bit fucked and it's going to get chilly if we don't deal with this now. Yeah, it doesn't really look like we have any other choice. 
it seems that way. Uh, Think about it logistically. You know, right. To, to brew, brew a beer, it requires a certain ambient temperature and environment. And if it's too cold, it's going to limit our selection. So it's true. Bad for business. Business. This is this is bad business. And um, uh, old man, sir, I I happen to be a pretty pretty good at healing. It. If you wanna, if you'd like some aid there, patch you up. He says, it is too late for me. Either you take the objects, or I All die. Right. All right, we'll take the objects. Aren't you going to die either way? He says, if you if you have accepted this responsibility, I only have this last gift to give you. And he kind of pulls out a small wooden box that he kind of hold, he holds in his hand. It's a small wooden box. And as he leans over the two objects that are in the snow, he kind of... There is a you see sort of a whip of black mist as a dagger uh, materializes in his hand, and he kind of looks at you before dragging the dagger across his neck. Honorable Sepulchre. And the the as he kind of as his eyes go wide, the blood flows out from his neck, coating these two objects that are lying in the snow. And as he he breathes his <gasps> his last breath, he collapses into the snow, and the objects are just sort of sitting there. Uh, as the blood seems to absorb into them. Very honorable. And with that, um, the Black Rider is just lying dead in the snow. <laughs> honorable Mitsubishi. Honorable Suzuki. Um, I well. take the box that he dropped, I guess. Yeah. All right. You he said this is his last gift to us, so I guess we should open it? Uh, as I say, opening it. All right. So you open the box. I need you all to let me uh, let me get the deck of many things table here. I think it's a D twenty two from what I remember. Yeah, give me Honorable one General Motors. Honorable Motorola. Uh, let me see if it's in here. Hold on. Deck. Oh. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Uh, so I need you all to roll me. Um, <laughs> I guess yeah, D twenty two. We'll we'll try. It. Okay, guys, whatever you do, no 22s because it is bad. Okay. So there, there are only there are oh only. Th <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh my god! <laughs> oh, you cursed my yourself. God. <laughs> well done, well done, oh. well done. All right, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, knew it. I knew it. I knew it. In my brain, I was just like. <laughs> so, let's if it go. If doesn't happen, something's wrong. No, let's what let's go. Done? Okay, so let me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is two times I've said that, and. It... Oh. I have angered the gods. <laughs> Give me one of the, one one second, because these are. Uh... This is the second time. That's so good. No, I'm not okay. <laughs> That's so good. Okay. This is the second time I said I will not roll a 22 on the second thing. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 is, no, is the void. Uh, so as as Will opens this box and pulls one of the three <laughs> cards from it, as Douglas pulls this card, uh, he has pulled the Eight of Swords, uh, the Void. Um, as his your soul is just like all of a sudden your body feels hollow. No and more of your decisions ever. You uh, you <laughs> you have Will. You are not you are not dead, but you have no soul. I'm so fucked. <laughs> oh, what's new? You have no soul at all. It's you, like, he just, as he draws his card, you just see him just, his, he just, his eyes glaze over as he's just, uh, like, all the anger fades from him, all the, uh, you know, all the impatience, all of it. It's just, he is a, he is a robot at this point. Uh... <laughs> 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 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> so, uh, Catherine, as you pull, pull your card from the box, uh, you pull the moon, 
uh, as. <laughs> oh my god, no! <laughs> Romeo, oh god. One, <laughs> Romeo, oh god. Romeo 1d4, please. Roll a d4? 1d4. Oh god. Mm. <laughs> You're granted one wish. <laughs> oh, damn! <laughs> I have to use it right now. No, no, you can use it whenever you'd like. Okay, okay, I'm gonna hold on to it. I'm just. How do I know this? Like, what happens? Like, it's just happens, you. Like... You. It's on the card. It's you. Like you are aware that it's happening. Okay. Uh, I just like. Is this card like a genie? <laughs> no, you just. You just kind of. You have to hold the card and speak your wish, and it will. It'll consume the card. Okay. Would I know about wishes at all, or maybe it? I don't know. Um, but you you rolled, Daylon. You rolled me a two. Uh, oh, okay. Number two. Uh, you you are aware that the next like you have an urge to defeat some sort of monster in combat because you will gain one level when you do. Seems fair. Thank thanks, Will, for uh, taking the bullet on. <laughs> well, I guess it's like comic because I got the dragon before. Oh, you know, like, oh lord! So. We, get, we gained a wish. You got diddled. Yeah. <laughs> um, question about the whole like wish thing. Sure. The, could it like get used up on accident if I like have it on my person and I like just mutter like oh i wish no no you have happened. to you have to intentionally like it's a it's like a spell you have to intentionally do oh, okay. it okay okay yeah. okay this is this is really good you can for your family <laughs> all right so you guys you guys have these you have these cards you have taken this vow uh yeah what do you want to do uh cry Kill well you, you are you are incapable of crying <laughs> it's true because <laughs> you, uh, you have no soul if yeah, um, I'll do a, a quick reminder. Thing is, uh, we're on sixteen retweets. We have another viewer decision when we hit nine more retweets. So if you've tweeted out and you want another viewer decision where you could potentially take our souls away, give players wishes, do anything else, who knows what's like, gonna happen? It looks like they're talking over what the monster should be that he should fight to gain a level. <laughs> Save your bowl. So if you want to decide what that monster could be, then get that viewer decision going. Of course, if you're new to hit that follow button and join us in just over half an hour here, we're going to be playing another game with you guys, the viewers, uh, and you guys in chat will be able to play along as well, even if you're not on the actual show. So, um, All right. I'm gonna, oh. I, I'm gonna take, can I, I'm gonna take a bio break real Good quick. Bio break, sure uh, while you guys discuss what exactly your next yeah. move is, I um, well. <laughs> First of all, we turn to the camera, we break down the fourth wall, and we say, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> and um, I, I say, I... That was weird. You alright? You alright, man? I don't know. I think so. I gotta punch, punch you in the shoulder. <laughs> just looks at it. <laughs> I mean, he you... almost tried to bludgeon me when I smacked him for making that comment earlier, so... I'll take a guess that this is probably out of character for him not to do anything. Are you are you feeling sick? What's, uh, what's with the... No, I don't feel anything, actually. Uh... No. I can slap you in the face. Yeah, just like... You know, not no. feeling anything could be... A blessing in disguise. Well, I guess, maybe so. I'm kind of sad, actually. This is this is depressing. <laughs> it's such a zest for life, even if it involves slaying people. Um, what happened to you guys? Uh, nothing good, you know. I'm probably feeling like you. I, you know, it's, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I mean, uh, Catherine had this wish card or something that she said. Was like, okay. Yeah, I don't know if we have the time to think about it right now, but I'm thinking maybe I could free my family with this, but... I mean, if you wanted a brewery, that would totally be fine with me. And I could, I could be the brewmaster. Up yours. Up my brewery? 
like erects the building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so what do you? Uh, uh, what do you guys do? Uh, by the way, um, the I don't know if you're necessarily uh, discuss like what you've been discussing, but the uh, the portal is wh whipping by behind you. And I'm running through. You gonna go right there? Yeah. I just like walk through. Yeah. <laughs> just, as, yeah. I'll... As you do. <laughs> just go through too. I just stroll. Right, give me one second. Go. Sure. So yeah, we uh, we just basically discussed the fact that we had some weird shit going on. So I've engaged in political discourse over the place. I got food right, delivery. So I just start like walking like an old All right. Time. All right. So as you guys, as you guys stride through the portal, um, give me one second. Uh, you uh, did you also you picked up the uh, the the keys with you, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, in the spear, like, the plague mask and a lock of hair. Yeah. So make sure I, we have all the things that we might need. I nudged Douglas when he picked up the right. spear. So as you guys, as you guys picked up the, uh, picked up the keys, um, the the first thing that you you kind of noticed was, you kind of you felt sort of empowered by some sort of magical effect, whatever whatever you know, vow or whatever promise that you made while pulling the, the cards out of this box uh, has clearly imbued you with some sort of ability to uh, see your test through because you all gain a plus two to an ability score of your choice. Oh. Hello. All right, then. Oh, man, I just realized I don't have my dragon stats anymore. Sadness. Yeah, no, you got to go back to... You're going back to regular, regular <laughs> status. The old... So it is this an, an ability score, right? So yes, one of your ability scores. Uh, however, uh, as well as this this boon, um, you also feel sort of this compulsion. Uh, it's almost like you know, it's almost like you've been imbued with a quest that you know you you cannot uh, deviate from, at least for for the time being. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a, a what a geus is. Uh, but it's sort of like an obligation that had been place, placed on you, and you're almost you're sort of compelled to see your obligation through, at least for now. So like um, a pact, almost. Basically, yeah. You have you have entered some sort of pact with Bobby Yaga herself through her rider, um, and as you, uh... I well, as that happens, I thank Yoda Stein for following. Welcome, my friend. Eventually, you a gentle Yoda and a scholar. Thank you for following, my friend. <laughs> All right. So as uh, as you as you stride through the portal, let me uh, let me bring you guys over here. Um, there is uh, these things will go to the GM layer because we don't need those anymore. Um, you kind of you kind of emerge uh, on the other side, and it's you know you you kind of you walk through this swirling cylinder, uh, only to find yourself instantly. S transported somewhere else. You are in the middle of a forest somewhere. Uh, this one, the trees and stuff are much different from the one that you just were in. Um, you also notice that it's significantly colder here. Um, you know, this is clearly the source of the winter weather, as it is it is freezing here, and you you kind of you instantly feel that chill rushing through you, and you kind of you, you're just sort of inherently aware that. The more time you spend out in this biting cold without proper protection or without shelter is, you know, it's going to be dangerous. Um, uh, I have my jacket. Oh. Yes, you have you have this yeah, big, yeah. heavy, heavy Yeti jacket. Uh, however, um, as you guys kind of turn around and take in your surroundings, you realize you're on a hillside, and you can see down at the bottom of the hill, and uh, you know, not too far away, is the faint and distant lights of what appears to be a village. Ooh, uh, I kind of I'm like shivering. Uh, yeah. I guess we should probably go down there and get our. <clears throat> Uh, find some something warm, you know. I'm I'm doing all right. I mean, that's ooh. fine. We'll leave you here in the hills. I'm just gonna start walking towards the village. Slump down and fall. <laughs> <laughs> I start kind of yeah, and yeah, uh, shivering. <laughs> yeah, shivering and like heading yeah. down, probably like jogging to get some amount of warmth back into my like bones, because <laughs> it's very swiftly getting very very cold here. 
Okay. Um, as you uh, as you guys are you guys are trekking down in you know down the hill and out of this forest, um, you know you're you're kind of trudging through this deep snow. Uh, you know, half a mile, then a mile. The village still is a ways off. Um, and you kind of, uh, as you're trudging, you see... Actually, everyone roll me a perception check, please. Sure. Oh, I set my cloak. That's good. Yeah, you uh, know. Perception is plus four for me, so... Okay. Four. It's a uh, 11. Man, I'll say hot. All right. Uh, so, Catherine and Daylon, you will notice that sort of. You notice a large shape lurch through the trees off to you know off to the right. Uh, it's a luckily it's a decent distance away, um, but you just catch a glimpse of it against the white, uh, the white snow. It appears to be a just a like a, a almost the size of a horse. It looks like a praying mantis. It's just a large insect, and it's just kind of skittering through the trees. And as it kind of disappears, uh, in you know, off, it seems to be chasing something. Uh, only a few seconds later, you hear kind of over the the gusting wind and the loud noise of the snow. You hear shouting voices. I want to. Um, so I I'm under the spell that I must pursue a specific quest until mm-hmm. completion. Correct. So I'm gonna first of all examine the spear that I got from Douglas. Okay. Do you want to, uh, I, do you have any way to identify, well, it's, you could attune to it. Uh, so, you, you haven't really had the time to actually sort of get attuned to find out exactly what it does. It looks like, um, uh, like, it's like a, you know what a boar spear is? No. Okay, so, um, yeah. unlike a normal sort of old style military spear, which is just straight and has a very thin point, you know, just yeah. for penetrating armor, uh, this is a boar spear, so it's, the handle is much thicker. And the head is actually kind of like a broad arrow point, uh, and it's got these metal bars that come out right behind the head, so that if you stab, like if you're hunting with it and you stab something, the bars catch on the the hide and oh, keep yeah, it from yeah. going. Boy, yeah. 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 Um. Awesome. I'm just gonna. I I I feel a sudden compulsion to chase after a giant mantis-like creature, regardless of. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna All right. start booking it. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna like look at him and be like, fuck, really? <laughs> <laughs> and I feel a sudden compulsion to thank Bullethead007 for following up, my friend, until eventually you, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar of a license to kill. Welcome. Her Majesty's Secret Service. Mm. Uh, so you. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have been running after? Because I haven't, I haven't seen what this is. Uh, there was like. A giant praying mantis. Uh, whoa, 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 Daylon, Daylon, no giant mantises. Oh wait, I just realized I have no soul. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> take two. Okay, <laughs> take two. Line. <laughs> Line. I'm like, uh, oh, okay, and I follow along. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Basically, familiar now. So Daylon, you go charging in, um, and as you kind of as you crash through the trees and stuff, you just make it uh, onto the other side of the uh, other side of the woods in time to see this. It looks like a caravan of people, uh, all kind of decked out in winter gear and stuff, um, and they are in the process of fighting this giant mantis. Cool. I'm just gonna charge the mantis. Yeah, my, go ahead and go gonna... charge in and roll me an attack. Exactly how big is this mantis right now? Uh, it is. I'm I'm pretty sure it's large size. Let me just check real quick. Um, Force induction. I don't know what training he's doing here, honestly. Don't yes, know how he got him. it is a it is a large size. That means it's about um, about <laughs> eight to ten feet long. Roll like a noodle today. Yeah. <laughs> In a real noodle. Yeah, uh, you cut you you dive into the fray and it's uh, it's not you don't like this thing is big and it's smacking things around. Uh, but as you know, as you you are you get in there, you see there are a couple other people with weapons of their own and they're in the process of fighting this thing. Some of them are landing hits, some of them aren't. Um, and so it's uh, do you, do the rest of you guys want to dive in and help him out? Yeah, I'm gonna dive in and help him. All right. You were back. 
you are back to your greatsword form. <laughs> All right then. Oh god, yeah. this is so sad. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, can I just swing it? Yeah, you can. You can just All right. Walk chrome mechanic. Just... Oh, yeah. Okay. I I am going to hit this creature with my sword. For twenty one. That will absolutely do it. Yeah. Takes thirteen damage. Yeah. So just as you're swinging into it, you kind of bite deep with a with a heavy wound, and just as you're doing this. Uh, two of the other people, one with a spear, another with a, a sort of a sword, uh, kind of, you know, also stab into this creature. And as you all kind of work together, you manage to bring this thing down. Uh, you know, it was looking for an easy meal, but it did not expect to be ambushed from both sides. So you guys make, uh, with the with the help of these uh, this caravan, you make short work of this mantis. It's it's not a particular threat, um, but you're sort of left there in the. Uh, you know, in the cold and all sort of standing around this, uh, this body. Uh, give me one second. I just got to open my page. Um, and what, one of the, uh, one of the guards, uh, is kind of a man with, uh, you know, long blonde hair and a bushy white beard. He looks, he's putting his sword away. He says, Ah, oh, where do you come from, all of you? I instinctively go to eat the mantis, but then I realize I'm not a dragon anymore. Nah, nah. not anymore. I look sad for a moment. I just kind of like walk up to them shivering like... <laughs> Can we maybe talk inside? The uh, there's, you see kind of um, as the, uh, the, the men kind of uh, check if everyone's alright and stuff, there's a, there's a young woman um, who is, uh, you know, again, blonde hair. Um, she kind of, she, or actually not blonde, it's more white. Uh, she walks up, she says, Oh, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, you, you look like you you don't have a place to stay. Would you like to join our campsite for the night? Please, please. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Dalen Oakbring here. Uh, uh, monster slayer extraordinaire and uh, part-time brewer, full-time brewer. Actually, a uh, pleasure to meet you. She, uh, she's. Oh, you you are foreigners, all of you. Uh, oh well, f I must thank you for your help in defending our caravan. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Can we just please go indoors? I'm really, really cold. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there are no doors, but we do have a campsite with large fire that will keep yeah. you warm. Let's go, please. As she, My uh, name is Douglas Templeton. <laughs> as she, uh, she kind of uh, leads you, uh, <laughs> leads you over like to the campsite. Um, you see that this this caravan group apparently they do like tr true to their word they do have a, a large campsite with some uh, some wagons and stuff that have been set up in a large fire uh, you know f as well as people cooking and stuff uh, she kind of you know gives you guys each you know if you don't have them she'll give you like a heavy blanket uh, or you know like a fur blanket and she says uh, allow me to introduce myself I am uh, Nadia Petska. Nadia, Hello. pleasure to meet you. Uh, I just, I just realized um, I probably should be heading back to the portal in which we just jumped through after talking to a very old gentleman <coughs> who cut himself in the, the, the throat. He died. We uh, have queens I, to kill. I forgot my cart. So this is, uh, this is kind of important. I don't have it on me. I'm getting a little anxious. It's, it's. Uh, I, I need to, I need to, I need to go back. So can you show me where we just went? I lo I got lost in the the, the the blizzard. She says, I do not know what you mean. Well, you see, I got this card of mine, and it's it's got all the stuff I need on there. <laughs> uh, we don't need the card. We need to kill the queen. Yes, we uh, came through a portal where... The winter is seeping through, and um, a lot of creatures are terrorizing. And we need to get to White Throne. She says, "White Throne? Oh, that is that is a long way from here." Uh, well, I I am from uh, I am from a village nearby called Waldsby. Uh, that is where. Well, they, you you can find shelter there, but you you are. You are new to these lands. I must inform you that 
it is quite perilous walking uninvited into the the white witch's territory uh, as well um I can take you to to Waldsby. That is where we are headed. Uh, you can find shelter, food, and perhaps proper uh, attire for traveling. But uh, I do Good. not know of any portal. We will go to White Throne. Yes, please. Show us the way. So, will that be near the portal or away from the portal? I I don't know of any portal. I'm I'm just gonna. Uh, Pat on Dalen's back and just be like, "Well, uh, I think your cart's over that way." <laughs> <laughs> She's lying. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Douglas you used to care once, all right. You used to care about the dream. I thought you were my partner. What's this? What's this? No cart nonsense, Catherine. You, you just simply don't understand. I have yeah. no soul. Oh. That explains it. Um. I don't I, I, Let's go. Let's start walking. So <laughs> she 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 kind of she kind of grabs you by the collar. She says, "I I think you should you may you might want to stay here. Night is settling in, and it is not safe to travel, uh, overland during the during the twilight hours. Uh, we we should stay at the camp and rest until tomorrow, and then make our way to the village." I think that's fair. She uh, she kind of sits you guys around the fire, you know, offers you you food and stuff, and she says, "So, please, I, what are you, what is, what are you doing in these lands? How did you get here? I am very curious. You you mentioned some sort of rider. Yeah, um, he, rider. he uh." Claimed to be, uh, what was it? Um, uh, what did he say he, for the queen? He was a former um... knight of the servant of the queen, guard or something. She says, yeah. she says uh, the the black rider is uh, well. I I know full well of it. It is a uh, the mythical servant of our patron, Baba Yaga. Mm-hmm. He came to tell us about uh, her disappearance and pleaded us to find her and proceeded to give us these keys. And I, I think Daylon has them, so I'm kind of just going to motion to him to kind of show. <laughs> I'm just going to cross my arms with the keys. I'm just like, give her Betty a really intense stare. She says not pleased with anything. She says the the rider came to you. It is it is a strange thing because Baba Yaga is powerful a, a almost a god in her own right uh, that she would I, I have never heard of her uh, or her servants heralding anything but the replacement of the current queen. She got forcibly replaced by someone that is rather evil, and her uh, daughter, it seems. She's gonna. She's yeah. attempting to ruin my brewing operation <laughs> in another plane. So I need to. We, we need to kill her. She says, "Yes, I. Uh, you. You are new. I. Uh, you are new travelers in these lands. I assume you do not know uh, the way things work. Um, uh, this is Ir- This is a country called Irisin. Uh We are." Uh, the, it is ruled over by uh, the White Queen. Um, she, the White Queen, are always the daughter of the descendant of Baba Yaga, and uh, the 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 witch, our patron witch, Baba Yaga, comes every hundred years to replace the queen uh, with a new daughter. Um, but it has been nearly a hundred and two years, and. The current, so the current the current queen doesn't want to be replaced is what you're saying she has not been I do not know of what what the reason for the disruption in the ritual is she just kind of sounds like a power hungry bitch to me <laughs> she says uh, we uh, we are tra- we are transporting food 
uh, through Waldsby uh, to a, a uh, to appease uh, Nazena, one of the uh, one of the White Queen's uh, lesser daughters. You are welcome to travel with us if you uh, if you like, but for now, uh, we, I suggest we get some rest. I uh, fall asleep. I fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, we don't really have a choice. I don't feel like dragging him anywhere. So, all right. Um, sometime uh, you guys all kind of settle in and you start sort of eating an evening meal. Um, however, sometime during the meal, uh, you kind of. Your, the camp is approached by what appears to be some sort of unexpected visitor. Uh, it looks like you see kind of striding into the camp is this very, very strange creature. It, it appears to be a woman, uh, but she's got blue skin and very sharp features. Her face is almost uh, has, has these almost goat-like horns and ears, and her legs are sort of, uh, you know, like horse leg like hooves. Um, and as she approaches the camp, she says, Ah, oh, hello, uh, you... Is, is it possible that a traveler might, uh, seek shelter here? She's got, like, hooves? She's like a pegasus? Uh, not like a, not like centaur. a pegasus, more like a... Uh, not, again, a, cent a centaur would have a, a full horse body. She just has, yeah. like, the, her, her legs are sort of, uh, you know, they go backwards oh, like, like this. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I sit up and I just watch her. I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, after everybody's gonna go to, after everyone goes to sleep, I'm probably gonna take like a torch and go look for the portal. Okay. Is it even in our place to offer a place for her to stay? Well, she's she's kind of coming. Like the there's the whole caravan, and Nadia uh, especially seems kind of. Um, startled and sort of nervous when this uh this person arrives but some of the other people um you know they uh they they sort of you get the sense that there's a there's a very all the people around the fire are very tense and very uneasy as this cre but they they don't say no they don't turn this person away as she sort of takes a seat uh you know well away from the fire and you know just sort of joins in the uh the evening meal um but as you as you guys kind of uh, as you guys kind of are talking and you know talking to Nadia about what's going on around here, you know, and the way the the White Queen and all that, you notice that this this new arrival is paying very close attention to you. Is there a a reason why you'd like to listen to our conversation so intently? She says, "Oh no, no! I have you are new travelers, and you are obviously not locals." Please pay no mind to me. Uh, I, I should do my part to, uh, to and to give back to this caravan. As she sort of pulls out a small, um, a small lyre and says, "Perhaps I can entertain with some music." As she starts strumming very gently, just kind of staring at you. No music. <laughs> if I had a soul, it would hurt it. Uh, I mean... the, when you when you guys start talking, uh, Nadia kind of butts in and talking, like looking at the creature. She says, uh, "You must be mistaken. These are uh, these are relatives visiting from another village. Uh, they are all uh, they are they are with us." I'm just biding my time, sitting there. Yeah. By the fire, like like a junkie that's suffering withdrawals, like scratching my head and just like thinking about the cart and how I'm gonna get up when everybody's asleep and go look for the portal and yeah, you, uh, the, the, as the, uh, as, as the, the, like, the creature does it, like, even though Nadia is very clearly lying on your behalf the creature doesn't, the, the woman doesn't seem to do anything, she just kind of smiles and continues playing her, her music and, you know, you don't you don't really know what, what she's thinking um, however, eventually, unless you guys want to, you want to ask or you want to do anything, the, uh, I do want to ask her. Just sure. See. What, what is a bard doing out in woods like these? Ah, uh, I am, I am simply a traveler and 
Uh, it's li I'm simply a traveler looking for a, pl a, a meal and a place to sit. Uh, I will be on my way shortly. I do not mm. wish to trouble any of you. I'm going to get up and grab whatever instrument it is and start bashing it against the fire. And she's like, this doesn't get me any closer to my car. And my friend said, no music. He said, no music. As you uh, are feeling well right now, I'm not feeling well. And I don't want to listen to any of that crap. As you, you grab the, the lyre and start bashing it, there's kind of a hushed, like, everyone in the uh, in the camp is looking on in fear as the, the creature is going to stand up sharply, like, looking at you with its uh, her eyes wide as she says, <clears throat> I do... I do not think that was wise. And as she kind of tug, grab, like puts her hands together, and you see sort of magic cascading around them, she pulls them apart, and a, a sword of fire emerges from her hand as she sort of stands up and looks like she is getting ready to sort of t you know, dive right at you. And that, I think, is where we will end the session for the night. Nice. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> just Douglas is like watching this happen, just like blankly <laughs> watching his friend. I'm just killed. like, I'm just like standing here, wanting to like, be, like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so as we we kind of uh, we kind of bring things to a close, what do you guys think? Did you have a good time tonight? Yeah, great Definitely. session. Great session. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> had a lot of fun having no soul. Took me a bit of getting used to. It. <laughs> I remembered that I had no soul. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. What did you guys in chat think uh, today? Uh, let us know your thoughts on episode three of Reign of Winter. Uh, of course, um, we're not done for today because we're going to be back in a few minutes. We're going to be playing some viewer games with you guys as well. Uh, as folks going along to play, we'll be playing along with you guys in chat. You're going to join in and play alongside us as well. It's a lot of good fun. So um, you can uh, check that out there. But let's go around and do some hooks and plugs before our uh, next show. So let's start with our DM, Askren. Thank you very much uh, again, my friend. So. Uh, Tell us what you do on the internet. Uh, well, uh, once again, before I do that, I want to thank everyone for hanging out and chat. Everyone who, you know, all you guys for playing. You guys are awesome every time, and I love doing it here. Um, for those of you who are new or, you know, or just want to know, my name is Askren. I'm the host and the dungeon master of the Exploding Dice channel, uh, which is a, another channel where we play live D&D every Sunday at 8 p.m. Uh, I also host a talk show every Tuesday at 8 p.m., uh, where I bring on all kinds of different D&D related podcasts or uh, Twitch stream guests every week uh, different and we you know we, we sit down we talk about dungeon master topics and we take live Q&A and it's a great time uh, and also I am here every Thursday running this and also various other things you can catch me on Curse of Strahd which is getting awesome uh, and dramatic so I'm, I'm always around yeah all right, then. So, uh, Kira, uh, let us know what you do on internets. Uh, right now, I am part-time streaming. Uh, myself and a couple of my friends are starting, trying to start up a group called Subpar Mediocre Gamers, <laughs> um, where we just do variety streaming. Um, I mainly do like art and then like Minecraft. I'm going to be trying to do some other games here, and then I'm going to go back to full time at the end of June um, when my boyfriend goes back to England. But yeah. Uh, have lots of fun and of course I'm here every Thursday as well and it's, uh, lots and lots of fun and we run a couple D&D campaigns of our own too on uh, my channel. Yeah, yeah, good fun. Uh, and uh, finally Trainzy, tell us what it is you do. Yeah, I just want to say I had a great time today. Thank you again for all the fun and hype and chat and asking. That was, that was a great campaign, especially balancing in between being in Pegasus and not Yes, I'm glad we're no longer polymorphed. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a full-time caster here on Twitch. I do five hours of MechWare Online and then uh, three and a half hours of variety gaming every night, 3 p.m. to midnight Pacific Standard Time, five days a week, and then a Monday show uh, as well. I also do cooking shows on Mondays and Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. So... Uh, Thank you guys for watching today, and thank you uh, again for our good friends, uh, Experience I've rated. Um, so I'm still able my Twitch list for messing around. Uh, it was um, Hitch for the night. Thank you guys. Uh, we'll be going back in a few minutes. We're going to go on a countdown, um, and uh, you will find uh, 
Find us back here in a few minutes playing some more D and D games. So do not go anywhere. We will uh, be figuring this all out on the fly. It is uh, Aston Training Production stuff, so there might be a few technical difficulties along the way as we figure everything out, but we'll be fine. So basically, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to go to countdown for another ten minutes. We'll be back after those ten minutes. We have new players in the game, and uh, we'll just play some music on the uh, the break for you guys. So we'll see you in a few moments, guys. Have fun, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Try to draw too many now ones because we'll be laughing when you do. See you in a few minutes. Bye. All right. Bye.